What's up, movie friends? Welcome back to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. We have a very special episode today. As many of you know, James worked as an assistant director on a feature film called Norse Game All the Way in England. And today, we're going to break down the entire behind the scenes of that crazy shoot with some of the filmmakers. What's up, everybody? James here. We are with filmmaker, director, writer, and star Nathan Kane, as well as Sarah Pico, who is an actress and stunt woman on the film. We're so excited to talk about all the cool stuff and crazy stuff that happened while we were making Norse Game in England. Say hi, everybody. Someone say hi. You're going to go first? I thought I was <laughs> ladies first, you know? I'm looking at you. All right, screw you. I'll go first. Hey, guys. Thanks for having us. This is really exciting. But I have to put it out there. It's James and Anthony's birthday today. Just uh, saying. Well, happy birthday to you guys. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Birthday. 24 years old. It was on the night. <laughs> 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 fucking wish. We're 34 today. So our, this episode's posting on Monday. Our birthday yeah, was on Tuesday yeah. the 19th. But thank you so much. We appreciate You're it. You're welcome. We didn't get them a cake, so. It's okay. We got we got chocolate covered fruit. Yeah, yeah mom sent yeah. an edible arrangement. It yeah. was amazing. It was great. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I thought that was you this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry, I was like, oh, Sarah's been busy. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, so Nathan wrote, directed, and starred in the film. And Sarah, say hi to everybody. Hello. What was your job on the film? <laughs> Me? Oh, I was. Yeah, so... you. She, she was the greeter. She was the greeter. She's like, hello, hello, to welcome to set, everybody. <laughs> Did you say it with a British accent? Yeah, yeah. she's going back to Annika. <laughs> it's coming all. It's all coming back. Um, yeah, I played Annika in the film and uh, did a bunch of stunts and did a lot of stuff. But just she like was odd adequate. jobs here and there. Yeah, adequate. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did a great job. Yeah. And now we met Nathan on our short film, Midnight Ruin. We actually got in touch with him. He was our stunt coordinator and made sure everyone was safe on Midnight Ruin. We did some fucked up stuff to Thank our Thank God he actors. was there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we buried someone alive in, in, the, uh, in the sand out in the middle of the oh, desert. Nice. We yes, made sure he yeah. didn't die, so thank you, pal. Yeah, thank you. and there was the fight scene as well. But that, that was kind of it. It was pretty The yeah, fire was fun, good. too. We did have a fire. We as had well, a fire. Yeah. I totally forgot that about could that. Could have gone. Yeah. Oh my rock. god! He just kept rock. spraying the lighter fluid <laughs> yeah, on the we fire, <laughs> and we're all screaming, "Oh my god! Stop! Stop!" And he's like, "What? I can't hear you guys." It could have gone bad. It was terrible. Everyone, everyone was safe though. Everyone's, everyone was yeah, okay. Nothing happened. Everyone was oh, safe yeah. Yeah. because yeah. Nathan was there. Yeah. yeah. That's and, how we met, and yeah, we've been friends ever since. Yeah. And then Nathan asked if we wanted to be involved with this film Norse game last year. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'll go to England and make a movie with you. Yeah, yeah. Viking film in England, what's not to love? Yeah, T talk Heck about yeah. Norse game, the inspiration, the plot, the story, and then we can break down the whole film and everything. Um, okay, sure. So it was an accidental film. It was just a stupid idea I had. And uh, I work as a stunt, well, I was working in England as a stuntman primarily. And I was on set and it was kind of like when you work in stunts, you get together with friends and you make little fight scenes for your show reels to kind of get your stuff out there to get more work. And I had this Viking idea and I was like, hey, this can go in my acting reel. This can go in my stunt reel. And I was working on a uh, TV series at the time and I mentioned it to a few of the stuntmen on set and they were like, hey, this sounds cool. Let's get involved. We want to make a Viking fight scene. And it kind of snowballed. And then before I knew it, we were making a short film with like 20 people involved and we had weapons and costumes and all kinds of stuff. And we made that short film and it was a disaster. Uh, we had a bunch of issues, but from that we salvaged some of the footage and we made a trailer. And then when I put that online, uh, I was approached by a private investor saying, is this a film? Like, can I see this? And I was like, no, sorry. And he went, <laughs> how much money do you need to make a feature film? And I was like, how much, how much you got? <laughs> um, and he was like, have you made a film before? And absolutely not. Could, could you? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I just need money, yeah. So um, that's how it came about. So then I kind of finished the story, finalized the idea. I love kind of ancient lore and myths and like pantheons. Doesn't matter where it's from, whether it's Greek or, you know, Roman or Japanese or Celtic or whatever. I love all that stuff. So yeah, I got really tied into the kind of Norse lore. And um, yeah, that's how the kind of the story was born and how it kind of got funding and how we made a feature film. Yeah, and we had some great elements to the film. We had an incredible stunt team because you both have stunt backgrounds. You brought a bunch of people that you know, as well as we had great locations in England. We had great wardrobe and props. I can't wait to talk about all this stuff, but it was just overall just an incredible experience. How do you feel about it, Sarah? Yeah, did you it, have a fun it time? was. I did have a fun time. Like, even after all the fires and stuff that we had to deal with, I had an amazing time. Like, yeah, and by fires you mean we had to put. What do you? Uh, yeah, what do you mean fires? Yeah, you yeah. mean literal fires yeah, yeah. or metaphorical? Oh, yeah, no, literal, Listeners, yeah. metaphorical. We had all kinds of fires. Every day, <laughs> every day, the WhatsApp twenty problems as soon yeah, as you wake up. I heard so much stuff because James would record so with much. me every once in a while. Uh, 
from Zoom, and he would tell me like some crazy shit that happened that day. And then when he came back, he kept filling me in on all these insane stories that you guys had to deal with on set, and it just sounded like a calamity, but also a lot of fun at the same time. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a grueling shoot. You know, we were in the elements in England in January for three weeks, mostly shooting exteriors. Well, you did a good job with the shot list and, and the schedule where you did all the exteriors for the first three weeks, which was cold and wet. And fortunately, it didn't really rain at all. Rain one we day, which so we did not expect. We got yeah. super lucky, so lucky, but it was freezing. And it was one, so cold. One week specifically was very, very cold. And some people, we almost lost people, like dropping like flies. It was that cold. Like they died? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Funny, funny. Because we were accused of that. Yeah. We almost lost them. <laughs> no, it was just a tough shoot. You know, long hours, long days, and it was cold. But that's making movies. Yeah. You've got to yeah. be in the elements, yep. and that's part of it. And it was, it was so fun at the same time because – Ironically, like we were at our, at our best when we were in horrible elements, and then second half of the shoot, we were in interiors and in, in the house, and we kind of like lost that edge. The crew was just having too much fun, yeah. too relaxed. So like it was yeah. it was way better when we were outside in the elements, freezing to death. Almost. We got shit done. Yeah, we we were we fucking did. good. Yeah, because it was like we got to get this done. We got to get back to the yeah. Airbnbs. But then yeah, everyone yeah. was a little too cozy in the interiors. It was a little like, too yeah. cozy, yeah. Okay. too relaxed. Uh, like yeah. having kind of we were cooking our own foods as well. Like we're having food delivered. That in one case we had to reheat it right, and it took like hours because it was like, hey, we can just chill. We're in a house. We'll put yeah. it in the microwave use a slow cooker <laughs> whatever it was whereas out in the cold it was like the food would arrive and just to get warm you would eat the hot food within minutes mm -hmm. and then it was gotcha. kind of right straight back to it we want to be moving we want to be fighting um so i heard a ton of crazy stories but i think the craziest one james told me was the mishap with the hotel rooms oh, oh my god Dude, you guys yeah. want to talk about insane. that well oh. i feel like we, could, we should kind of set it up in terms of like how we shot the film so basically we were traversing the entire country of england we were in yeah. coventry silverstone Liverpool, Reading, uh, we were just outside London for a few days. We were all over the country. We yep. would film like for three days in one spot. Then we'd all like caravan to another location, another city, like an hour, hour and a half away. And so that happened, what, mid shoots. We were in, we were in, we were was, going to It was almost to daily. Like for the first day we were up north in Otley, which is up in Leeds. And then day two, we were down in Coventry, which is halfway down the country. Day three, we were in Reading, which is near London. Uh, and then day four, we went to Silverstone, and that's when we stayed for a little block of period. We were there for, I don't know, maybe a week or so, and then back to Reading, and then we went up to Manchester. So from kind of day one, it was like doing a full day shoot, and then two, three hours in the car to another location. So it was a lot of late nights and early starts. And in this episode, Nathan's going to give away a crew sweatshirt from Norse Game to a winner. So all you got to do is leave a comment on the YouTube version of this episode on our YouTube channel, and one random person will be selected to win a sweatshirt or a hoodie or something from Norse Game. And something probably worth mentioning as well is this was also a micro-budget film, right? So we knew it was going to be long days and tough hours and kind of briefed everyone on that, but I don't think everyone was fully prepared for that. <laughs> yeah. It was a grueling shoot, especially when we got there. We got there a, like a week before filming began. I got there, I think, March 3rd. We didn't start filming till March 8th, and we went to – we had this great Viking Village location. Yeah. And so me, you – me, Sarah, Nathan, and two other guys, we were just building huts outside to help, you know, make the – the village looked more populated and more dense and it worked really great great practical effects and great great production design but that three-day period it was raining pretty much the whole time yeah. we were just covered in mud but it was <laughs> yeah. also the time of our lives we bonded through trauma yeah, like the, we, five, so, the yeah. five of us were just so close at the beginning of that because yeah. we're in the airbnb as well so it was kind of for four days just the five of us inseparable I was going to pick up like the Artems and weapons and costumes and stuff, but you four especially were just out in the rain building huts all day. Yeah, that's great because you, you never you thought you were going to build a hut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the way you described it, hey, you want to come early and help build some stuff? I'm like, yeah, sure, man. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, and we're outside in the rain for. 12 hours building huts. It was a blast, though. I had so much fun. Learned a lot, too. We actually built a wood and, like, thatched roofs and everything. Yeah. Sarah was doing all her, like, rigger knots and everything. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was, so it was, so it was proper. They're proper huts, but you probably... They weren't structurally completely sound. <laughs> we found out. Just like our podcast wall. Well, you know, which kind of worked out because we threw a guy through one of the huts anyway. Yes. So. Yeah, we did. Stunts, baby. Stunts. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a blast. But no, it was super fun in the Airbnb with just the five of us making beans and toast for breakfast, which yeah. was amazing yeah. to so have. Good. Surprisingly delicious beans and toast. Um, Amen, but, brother. Yeah. So it was us three, then another stunt guy. And then basically the hands on set are like sort of. How would you describe Rocky as overall just production manager, PA? Yeah, sort he of was role. doing a production manager role. But he kind of slid into PA roles as well. He'd never done production. Man Again, with this being micro budget, we had to, I had to ask a lot of friends to just help out because we just didn't have the budget to bring in people. So 
it was kind of like people taking on roles they'd never done before. So for example, Rocky was very much the production manager on it, but at times he had no idea what he was doing. So he was just trying to be helpful in any way he could because he, he's not from the film industry. You know, I met him back when we were dancing years ago. He's a dancer primarily. So he was just there as a helpful, friendly guy. He's um, the best, yeah. Yeah, so we had a lot of that going on. Um, he got to do a little stunt too. Yeah, he did he, some stunts. He did a fight scene. Yeah, yeah, you killed some him. Fights, yeah. How many I stunt people him? in total? I don't killing him. How many people for, that were I from mean, the stunt world that came onto the 30? film in total? The busiest days on set, I think there were 43 people on 43 set. 43 was yeah. our busiest yeah. day. And there was, yeah. what, 20 there was to a, 25 stunts? The kind of extra stunt people who came in addition to kind of the main cast, so to speak. There were uh, 22, if I'm, if I'm remembering. And you filmed, what, a huge battle with them? Several, yeah. Yeah, they were there for a week. Wow. We had 22 for about, I don't know, eight days. Mm -hmm. And then a small fraction of that, about eight of them stayed on for another couple of days. And then outside of that, all of our lead cast were stunt performers as well. That was really important because it was a Viking film and it's micro budget. It was like we couldn't be messing around with stunt doubles. So it was like it was really important when I was doing the casting. We needed people who could act, but it was more important they could move well and fight well. That was kind of almost the most important criteria. Um, but we got very lucky. We got a lot of good actors and actresses as well. Um, Why'd you cast Sarah then? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Sarah's an incredible that? stunt woman. She's incredible, and she's yeah, she's great. Yeah, she's yeah. the best. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. You did some cool stuff. So Sarah, if we haven't been close, Sarah played Annika, which is the female lead of the film. Okay. Um, fierce, badass warrior. I don't know if you want to talk about your character. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like I mean, this was my first time acting in a feature film. Um, all of the experience I had before was just like small little things here and there. Um, but I love this role so much. I feel like I couldn't have been typecasted better. Like just the character and who Annika is and how like motherly she is and how she cares for people. Um, and just, she's just so strong-willed and stuff. I feel like that just fits who I am so well. So it wasn't really like, I don't know. There, it didn't really feel like I was playing a character. It was just like, me doing my thing, you know. Did you do an accent? Yeah. Yep. Nice. Did a England um, baby. Yep. Oh, a yeah. little Scandinavian English mix accent. That's did awesome. you hear a hello in the beginning of the episode? <laughs> hello. 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 I hope that wasn't her performance. That was Annika. <laughs> hello, I'm Annika. I'm gonna hit you with my axe. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she looked great. The wardrobe was incredible. Oh my we, gosh, the costume. Yeah, we were had amazing. a costumer from Game of Thrones. It was incredible. We got access to too. incredible costumes. So yeah, I, so you amazing. you were telling us about the project uh, late last year. And you told us you had all these pieces to work with. You had the Viking village. You had a ton of costumes and you had a ton of armor and props and weapons. And it's just a smart thing to be like, I have all these things at my disposal for free. Let's just make a movie. And I think that was just like the smartest decision you, you could have made. It was just it just made sense to do that. Yeah, it was. Um, I pulled in every favor I had for, for this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I probably don't get another one of this kind of scale. Um, like I said, it was it was accidentally. It was never meant to happen. So when I told people and it was kind of stunt guys, oh, hey, we want to get involved and do a fight scene. I'd mention it to another friend and he'd be like, hey, just so you know, I, I have a Viking village. Like, I'll give you, you know, a really good deal on it or I won't charge you for it if you get catering done there as well. And it kind of snowballed from there and more and more people or friends I knew. And I, I just reached, tell the project to friends. And they'd be like, did you say you need weapons? I know the armor for, you know, um, House of Dragon and uh, whatever else they've done. Um, like just all kinds of stuff like that just kept happening and so we ended up in a situation where yeah we had a even though it was micro budget we had access to a viking village but also on the site they had a vietnam village and they had all this kind of wooded area so we filmed a bunch of the film there because we come forward in time in the film um so it's like a vietnam scene and a red coat scene which was really fun and so we shot all of that there and then on site they had all these quest uh, questions what am i talking about they had all these costumes and that was from the Vikings TV series. Their costumes from Patriot, was it? Yeah, Patriot. Patriot oh, wow. like the red coats. All the red yeah. coats, yeah. 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 So we had all them from Patriot. So they had this like huge, amazing costume storage. And then, yeah, our costume designer, um, she's worked on like, I can't remember what she said. She worked on like The Witcher. And Witcher, yeah, the Witcher Game, of Thrones. Yeah. Game of Thrones and yeah. stuff. Damn. Um, you got Jon Snow's gauntlet. I did. Yeah. Oh, we should have yep. brought them. Oh, I should have. Because yeah. I do yeah. have them. I still have them? I, I do. Yeah, 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 she I, took them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Does Kit Harrington know? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, I should have brought him. Yeah, I so love Annika those. wore Jon Snow's gauntlets in the whole movie. That's very yep. cool. It's pretty yeah. sick. It was pretty cool. And then cool. you got to keep him at the end, which yep. was amazing. So yeah, that kept happening. It was kind of just favors and friends I knew who just wanted to help out and was excited to be involved. 
And yeah, by the end of it, we ended up with this awesome armory. Like I said, the guys who did the, the weapons for um, Rings of Power, that was it, and House of Dragon. Mm -hmm. Costume we just spoke about, this Viking village. And then there's uh, this awesome underground Liverpool, in Liverpool, this underground like network of tunnels, like, I don't mind, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and these were all people I knew who were just like, we'll help you out, we'll do you a favor. So we, although we had no money, we had no budget, we had loads of assets and loads of mm -hmm. like amazing things um, to kind of up the production value. Um, which put us in a strong position to get like more people involved, I guess. Yeah, when people see the movie and we start releasing trailers, they're gonna be like, holy crap, this is a micro budget because our production value is gonna be so goddamn high. Yeah. We had incredible, incredible assets. The weapons were awesome too. Yeah. We had a ton of yeah. weapons. Uh, Sarah had an awesome shield and a couple axes, which was used like the Gimli of yeah. the group. <laughs> <laughs> I had so many weapons on my kid. So many weapons. <laughs> Nathan had a badass sword. Nathan was the lead. He plays a character named Cole, but he had great wardrobe as well. So that was, we were just like, really flooded with incredible assets to use for wardrobe. And James, across. you got involved in some stunt work at her. Yeah. Yeah. I had three cameos in this movie. Uh -huh. Tell us about them. I killed them all. I <laughs> <laughs> the first one, I'm I'm just a merchant just selling yeah. goods to Sarah. Yep. That was your first day. No that was, dialogue. So that was like day two of filming or something. Yeah, it, it was. was. Like day yeah. two or three. So basically, did, they, did you have like a wig on or anything? No, I didn't have a wig, but I had a big furry hat as well as a ton of clothing, like a tunic and then something mm -hmm. on top of that. Like a merchant's backpack. Yeah, yeah. Like, so there was like rabbits and furs and stuff. Yeah, fake animals. Yeah. But honestly, uh, some of the best improv work. I've ever seen. What'd you do? <laughs> so much. <laughs> I stole the movie. We rewrote the movie for my character. <laughs> we gotta I, get more of this merchant, I be, I guys. I became the lead. It went from Norse game to the merchant. <laughs> <laughs> no, no dialogue. Just like from uh, a wide, like a, 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 a zoomed in shot from far away. Just mingling. Bantering. Yeah. Oh, just you know, a little selling, heckling. Little he was, he was yeah. in it like a little it was coverage, a close just shot. haggling. You know, yeah. like, let's, let's, how about what you want some of this? You want some of that? You put James in front of a camera, you're gonna get to, you're yeah, gonna he loves it. It's true. It's true. It was like, right, I'm gonna have to direct this scene. And then it was like, shit, James is killing. I don't need to do anything. James, show, James showed up yep. with a prepared monologue. So I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> just three minute monologue. <laughs> I could have been the best. You know, some stunts as well, right? I did a couple stunts. Yeah. Some stunts I was not expecting to do. The plan was that oh. Sarah was going to stab. No, Nathan was going to stab we me. We both wanted to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was AD, yeah. so it's like, let's kill the AD. I was yep. like, fuck yeah, let's kill me. <laughs> I thought I was just going to get thrown in there and get stabbed and like by them both but it turned into me being in a whole scene and I was not prepared for this I was so worried <laughs> you were I was so stressed out I was so yeah. worried I was gonna ruin the scene I'm like I've never done combat stunts on camera before so I did some stuff Sarah punched me it was like I, a whole fight scene wasn't yeah, yeah I like dodged a sword from you I, like, I, we had a wrestle it was yeah. a 12 beat fight scene yeah, yeah I was like yeah. fuck dude what the fuck it's crazy I'm like I don't, I don't wanna ruin the movie and you were then, covered in uh, makeup and stuff yeah I had yeah. war paint on like leather armor yeah, yeah, and like leather armor. mail and stuff. And, and then, then so I got stabbed by you, right? Yeah, I stabbed you and then I pulled you behind me and then Sarah stepped in and clotheslined you. Yes. And, then and you did a real you did a fall? Him, yeah. yeah, she yeah. clotheslined me four times. It was sick. Damn. Yep. Got padded up. Yep. She's too afraid to hit me. Can you believe I, that? I was. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt Now him. she would just haymaker me. Like. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> she yeah. almost kicked you in the face well, earlier. Hey, now that you're claiming to be a stuntman, yeah, it's on. Stuntman James. <laughs> stuntman but you did James. But you did a fall? Yeah. Yeah. So just basically, Sarah taught me real quick how to do it. You just like kind of. It was go. a wreck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah a you did a, a wreck. Back, you go. Yeah, you flat basically. back. You kind of just. You have to land so that your feet hit and your body weight is just kind of transferred. No everywhere. whiplash on your head. Yeah. You yeah. tuck your chin. I learned. Yep. I learned from the best. <laughs> And then became the best. Okay. <laughs> the right. modesty <laughs> okay. right into arrogance. You've got it quick as well because some of the things with stunts, um, sometimes it's, it's best to not overthink it. Just kind yeah. of just do it kind of habitually. Like our bodies a lot of the time want to look after themselves. So it was kind of like we did the whole fight scene. We spent longer on that than the actual wreck you did. We did this whole fight scene and everything. And then I stabbed you, which was just a reaction from you. And then you just did a running into Sarah's clothesline. And then it was just a flat back. You had padding on and you did it very naturally. There was no kind of coaching or training really yeah, it was thanks. just kind of i was just like fucking send it bro send it <laughs> yeah that's, that's but once you're the padded up you just feel invincible yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got an ass pad a back pad and elbow pads i was like let's go yeah. throw me into a tree everyone's like you cage was like yeah let's fucking go again <laughs> hit me i told him like sarah hit me harder now you know so, why we love stunts yeah now you know why we love you guys are gonna love the fall guy yeah, you guys, you guys are gonna love tell it all like everyone. Guy. You're gonna yeah, love, you're gonna love the, stunk, the yeah. fall guy. Plus, like so many on set jokes that they have. They make fun of sound guys. They make fun of ads. They make fun of the cinematographer, pyrotechnics. But all these great inside jokes that happen on set, they just nail. They nailed that movie. And you also stabbed. 
Yeah, Nathan. I had my third uh, role yeah. was a, yeah. another cameo. We, we, we couldn't get enough of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, like we couldn't cast somebody. Then Nathan's just like, a yeah, week we, before we that had scene. someone cast. Again, we the film the project was cast. We had so many things go wrong, and some of it was was down to production being unorganized. Some of it was down to micro budget. Some of it was just down to error from lack of sleep and stuff. But a lot of stuff that happened was just stuff genuinely out of our control. Like yeah. the hotel thing was one of the biggest fuck ups in history, which I'm sure we'll get oh, to. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, and so, yeah, we had an actor. There was a few acting roles we had where like the day before or the evening before the actor would message me just like, oh, I can't come now. Oh, my God. And it was like, what? You've got dial. you got this. So um, there was what this was one of them scenarios. I don't think it was quite that late. It was like a little bit prior. Uh, our actor pulled out for whatever reason. And so it was just like. And at this point, we were like week three or four of filming and I was stressed beyond belief with the amount of shit that had gone wrong. And I was just like, J James, can you just fucking do it? And he was like, fuck yeah, I can. I get to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> also, you named the character James. So it was basically yeah, the character was called James. It's interesting you wrote a character for me that, just was, for you, just man. that was gonna kill you and stab the shit out of you. Absolutely, meant man. Meant to be. Yeah, it was, it was no a lot spoilers. Of like, yeah. Cole doesn't die. He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spoiler. Well, <laughs> oh yeah, hold on. Well, if you ran a, when you, if you ran a log line or synopsis, would you mention mention the? Yeah, Cole's immortal. Yeah, so it's a more an immortal character. So we traverse time. So it's mostly yeah. half the movies in Viking. That's why era. I said no spoilers. Like, yeah, yeah. It's all good. yeah. And then we're going forward in time. Yeah. yeah. yeah so uh, we got Cole gets cursed, set in Viking times predominantly. Cole gets cursed by a Scandinavian god. Um, so he's kind of got this bewitched mind, and there's a group of warriors, Annika being one of them, who are trying to help Cole regain his sanity by taking down this god. But their battle moves through time because. The god and Cole are both immortal. Hence why we're able to do stuff with red coats, red and coats Vietnam and stuff. Yeah, so. Crusaders some stuff. Very yeah, cool. Crusaders Vietnam really cool. and things like that, yeah. Yeah, but then we had another situation where an actor dropped out last minute where were we in Coventry or is it Silverstone with the cottages in the farm? Silverstone. So Silverstone? Yeah. Which which was this? There remember, was that many. remember when your friend had to come last minute where the guy phoned you the day before saying oh, he couldn't yeah. get to set. Yeah. Because his car broke down. And he didn't. He hadn't. He hadn't had a car. And he had an expired license. And he'd known about it and not told us. And then, like the day before filming, I reached out to him, like, "Are you all set for tomorrow?" And he was just like, "No." Nah. <laughs> and it was like, "Wait, why are you not? Why have you not told me? What's the problem?" Oh, I don't have a vehicle. And I was like, "Right, okay, oh I will come God. pick you up." Like we're in London because we're filming a few hours from London. Like I'm passing through London. I will pick you up. Well, I'm working till ten, so or nine or whatever it was. It was like, "Dude, what do you want me to do?" Like you haven't given us any notice. And he that was like a speaking. It's a big role. It's a dialogue heavy role, fight scene. And it's also right there open in the film. It's like the first character you see speak pretty much. So, and that just kind of got dropped on us. I don't know how many hours before. It was like afternoon before. the day before. The day I can't before. believe they said yes to it yeah. when- They said yes, committed, everything was good. And then we've been in touch and everything was fine. And then literally the day before I was like, you're still good for tomorrow. And it was like, no. That's some, like how far in advance did he commit to the role? Like weeks and yeah, weeks. Yeah. Oh my god, that's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I think he was cast in December and done a self tape and everything. You know, a very good, <laughs> talented actor did a very strong self tape. Was very involved. And then what was weird when I then contacted him, being like, "Look, we've had to bring someone else on board because we can't get you to set tomorrow. You've given us no notice, and you don't finish work till like nine p.m. or whatever." He was then arsy with me, like I had done something wrong. What? Like, like how could like annoyed that I cut him? And it was like, "What? What do you want me to do? You've given me no notice to like, you know, help you out here." Um, and these two were just like, "Fuck that guy." <laughs> <laughs> well, we had we had forty three people on set at this point, and yeah. we were staying on a farm with a ton of people sleeping there. We we're all sleeping together, yeah. so it was a pretty expensive week. And I mean, we had to shoot like five scenes of dialogue with him the next day. It was yeah. an integral part of the movie. Wow, and we five couldn't. Scenes? Yeah, and the more we had, what did you guys do to replace him? I just reached out to every friend I had in England and was kind of like, "Who can help me out tomorrow?" It was two days filming. It was Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Who can help me out for two days? It's a speaking role. Uh, it's a fighting role. So I reached out, and then yeah, a, a really talented actor, a friend of mine um, from up north, hopped in his car, drove like four hours down that evening, did the two days, and then drove home. He, he killed us it. Out. Wow, yeah. he, he killed did it. a really good yeah, job. He was awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. He's obviously perfect for the role. Yeah, yeah he was great for the role. I'm I think sure he was the other guy. Than, yeah. Well, I'm sure he would have done a good job too, but I think we got really lucky. We definitely with it, did because he yeah. killed that role. Yeah. Now there were. So many problems that happen. I'd love to like go through all the huge fires. We'll be here all day, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. let's get to the hotel story. <laughs> right, the hotel because <laughs> we've been so, teasing this one. So this was a day where we were gonna film all day and night, and then we we're gonna take a caravan of forty-three people and drive like an hour and a half to where was it? Reading? We were driving to? Or no, was... we were. We, this was when we were just like fifteen, twenty minutes from set. 
Yeah, this but was it was a Reading. Bit of a long drive. Okay, so we're going to Reading. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are transporting everyone through with a couple of vans yeah. and then uh, cars, mini buses, yeah. Yeah. trucks. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Kinds, so we had like maybe convoy. five vehicles at this point because yeah. so you were the Mad Max, just yeah. <laughs> legit. <Yeah. laughs> Minus the guitars and fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been sick though. You get, next time. Been. Next time. Next time. Yeah. And so we wrapped around like eleven or ten, eleven. Pretty. No, it was later than. We got to the hotel at one a.m. Okay, so we got to the hotel at one a.m. And so should we name the hotel or no? Oh, it's, it's a chain. So I think it was Travel Lodge. It was, uh, it was Travel yeah, Lodge. It was Travel and so you had like you a had, big chain in England. And you had pre-booked how many rooms? Twenty. Uh, it was enough for forty-three people. Yeah. And it was some rooms were single, some were double, some were triples. And you already yeah. paid for it. It was advance. paid. It was like it was a good chunk online. of money. It, it was yeah. booked paid. online. In a low context, all shoot, we we're all doubling up in rooms, tripling up in rooms. Me, Sarah, and Nathan pretty much had a room pretty much every time we stayed in a place together. So like everyone was getting close and comfy because it was micro budget. We couldn't get everyone on yeah. the hotel room themselves. Or like Airbnbs, like six to a house or whatever. Like yeah. it was just everybody just being on top of each other, living on top of each other, which I think was actually really good for the camaraderie. Yeah, we, I think so. We yeah. all got yeah. super and close. We didn't have any incidents that I'm aware of. People, you know, getting annoyed of each other or. Not um, nothing. You know, I think we were lucky on that. Yeah. Because so, so sometimes we, yeah. when you round people too much, you can get a bit wound up and mm -hmm. kind of yeah. lash out, I guess, and cause problems. We had a good time. There's, we had a good time. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, um, so you guys get to the hotel at 1 a.m. And we're exhausted. And you're, there's We've how many people? Since the morning before. You're with, what, 25 people? 43 people. 43, 43, 43 yeah. people, you, and you guys all get there. So basically what happens is a couple people got there first, and then we showed up, I think, last. Our car was last because yeah. uh, we're always first. We set, locked last up to location and then followed. And then um, someone... Some of the guys were in the parking lot. Like, hey, what's going on? Are you, why aren't you guys going inside? Because everyone's in the cars and it's freezing. Yeah, you know, it's like fucking twenty degrees Fahrenheit, uh, like whatever Celsius that is. Yeah, it was like minus three. one, minus two. Yeah, or something. It, was a, yeah. it was a cold it was, night. It was, it was like, a cold yeah. week, and and we were all covered in blood. And yeah, dirt. covered in blood. And we were, and we were exhausted, 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 exhausted. And so we get there, and one of our crew says, "There's no rooms for us, and that the rooms have been booked up. But there's an issue with the travel lodge." And Nathan's like, "What are you, what are you talking about?" So then you went in there. And I guess some of our ca crew and cast were in the lobby. Yeah. But then, if you want to explain what happened when you walked into the travel lodge. So, and it was also we didn't we didn't need this on the day it happened. It was a bad we, day. We'd had it some was... issues with crew. We'd just done a relocation. We'd driven down like six a.m. that morning. We'd done a full shoot. It was like a one a.m. wrap. It wasn't meant to be that late, but like I said, we had issues with some crew and everything. We get to the hotel. Now this has all been booked. It's been paid for. I have the reference. I have the emails. I've got the bank statements. And they knew we were doing a late check-in. And they knew we were doing a late check-in. And I'd emailed them. This was on the Thursday. I emailed them on the Wednesday, the day before, saying, hey, are we still good for tomorrow? And they emailed back, yes, you're good for tomorrow. So we get to the hotel and the guy's just like, I don't have any rooms for you. All the rooms are gone. They're all gone. All the rooms are gone. So I was kind of like, yeah, for us. Like we've pretty much booked this whole place. Like. And it was going to be for five days. And it, yeah, it was for like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, it was like for a week. So you pre-booked all those rooms for 43 people for five days in advance. You paid for it. Yeah. And you guys showed up at 1 a.m. And they said, we don't have any rooms for you. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Welcome That's to England. That's <laughs> fucking insane. And so yeah. we were just like devastated. And it was like 1 a.m. And then this guy, bless him, he's just a, you know, a receptionist. A clerk, yeah. It's like, what can he do? So then he's trying to get hold of his manager because he's like, you're mistaken. You're at the wrong hotel. So then I'm showing him the emails. And he's kind of like, oh, shit, that is our hotel. I'm like, yeah, like we're in the right place. I've got the booking. And he's like, I don't know what's going on. So then he's trying to get hold of his manager, but he can't reach his manager because it's like one in the morning. So the manager's not waking up or whatever. So then he's trying to speak to his, his like HR team or whoever's awake. He's on the phone to anybody. And we were there for like two hours while they were trying to sort this. And every time he was kind of like, oh, this is wrong. I would show a bank statement or I'd be like, look, this is this and that. And I had everything. Look, this is the email from you yesterday. Like our HR says you haven't done it. I'm like, this is an email from your HR department yesterday confirming the booking. Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. And then he was like, so he was completely on our side, but mm -hmm. he also was kind of like, there's nothing I can do. The rooms are physically taken. We, we booked them out. So that left us about, by this point, I don't know, half two, three in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah with 43 much. people knackered, been doing fight scenes since like Wearing 6 a.m. or whatever. Chainmail and leather. Chainmail, blood, and everything. Paint. Sleeping in cars and vehicles. It's like minus two in the morning. And it's like, well, where the fuck do we go? What do we do? You know? Um, but luckily, we found another hotel nearby that could accommodate all of us. Holiday Inn, baby. Save the yeah. day. Hol yeah, America! So, so then Nathan, <laughs> Nathan stayed at the Travelodge to try to sort everything out. Then me and Sarah took everyone to the Holiday Inn. 
and we got everyone checked in into rooms and by like 3 30 we had finished everyone had their own room yeah. and just for a night though we didn't know if we'd be have rooms the next day mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so we had to wait nathan stayed up all night because he waited for 7 a.m for the holiday in manager to come in yeah to talk to to see because the the receptionist was incredible the holiday and really saved our ass yeah. she's like our manager comes in at 7 a.m you should talk to them they might have space for you for the next five days because we didn't know if the travel lodge screwed us and took all of our entire week's rooms but fortunately the rest of the week our rooms were okay at travel lodge yeah and because i went to the person who i made the booking with and they were furious because it looked bad on them Mm -hmm. uh and they were like look there was a huge cock up basically a trainee booked it so we took your money we did everything we needed to do but then we didn't notify the building so then they didn't reserve the rooms oh shit so, so it's but... kind of like a third party type thing i guess and so then after that night at the holiday inn you guys were able to go back to the travel lodge yes. for four days yeah, yeah so exactly. she, I, I spoke to her the following like james said, i was up all night like trying to problem solve and deal with things we had issues with crew at that point this was the night where i was like we mate pull the plug yeah the movie yeah. almost ended that night at that like night 5 i was like i'm done i'm five five the plug. Yeah. it's a tough night i was like i'm yeah. done there's no way we can keep doing this because this is like like there'd been so many big incidents um before this particularly around a certain actor um and i was kind of done and these two were like do chill like it's fine and so the following morning traveler phoned me and i was furious i had a word with her and, and she was like i'm totally on our side about it and was like i'm annoyed because i booked this for you but the trainees not booked it right so the rooms went out so she got it dealt with she was like give me like an hour and then and then let me come back to you and she came back an hour later she was like i've dealt with it the rooms are available you can go right now they will give you all the rooms and uh we'll compensate you for you know the money you had to spend last night for the emergency rooms and we killed the um, trainee <laughs> 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 you'll never have to deal with her again or him <laughs> nice save. He's, he's dead <laughs> so yeah. he burn in hell <laughs> Ho- hopefully that person doesn't make that mistake again because it sucked yeah it yeah, really it was, did it was rough awful. but everyone got a good night's sleep and then because um, it was not helpful because we had a long couple of days and nathan sarah and i we weren't even sleeping at all i mean we were no. getting like two hours of sleep a so night. that was the like that, that three day stretch was the stretch where i got about in three days i got four hours fucking eight yeah. and then i don't know what you could probably not far two, off for you i was too. averaging like two hours a night yeah when much. i would see you on zoom when we were recording every once in a while it was like every week your hair got messier <laughs> 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 and your eyes look just like dead. <laughs> you were like a zombie. Still brought that every energy. Week, every week, every week. No, you, you did not bring the energy. <laughs> you I did my best. You did not bring the energy. I thought I brought the energy. You're, and by the fourth week, your hair was just like fucking Chalamet and Dune, just like all over. <laughs> well, then it looked good then. <laughs> Must have looked awesome. <laughs> oh my god, it was so funny. <laughs> but this is making films, right? This is what it's yeah, about. Yeah, it is. Like yeah, every it's time we had a problem solving. and people doing stupid shit, well, we were like, why are they doing that? Or why are people like we had a lot of issues with like crew and cast and stuff. And every single time someone would come to me, I'd be so annoyed. And James, every single time, just kept going. We're making a film. Like, <laughs> what the hell are these guys playing at? Like, what did they think it was going to be? We're making a film. We're yeah. in England. It's January. It's cold as shit. We told people it was going to be cold. We yeah. said it was going to be They signed up days. for it. The people who were shocked that it was cold, I'm like, bro, it's January. So you had some yeah. people, so you, so you were telling me you had some people who were, by within a couple of weeks, they were just very unhappy with the weather. And, but yeah. it's like, you, you told them. It was very minimal. Yeah. yeah. You're shooting exteriors I mean, look, it in was, winter. It's an ambitious schedule. It was a grueling shoot. We were in January in exteriors for three weeks in England. I mean, that's kind what of all the information ex- you, you expect? need. Yeah. And micro we're budget, micro budget, you know? so it's not like we got these like amazing, you know, heating facilities. Yeah, and, like, we're gonna know, be filming twelve-hour days sometimes, you know. Like that. Yeah. But I mean, we did a great job with planning. And Nathan did an incredible job with scheduling everything, and specifically things like his catering setup was incredible. I mean, the catering was one of the best parts of the entire production. Food's so important, but like mm. he had people, he had catering companies delivering food for uh, sometimes breakfast if we were shooting, but more uh, afternoon for lunch than dinner at times and you get a big box of hot food it was delicious food too so that really was one of the best parts and like one of the most integral parts of success for the movie was the incredible catering mm. we Great got lucky with the was. catering yeah and then on site at one of the locations in Reading, we had hot food cooked for us there which was incredible you could brekkie. order what you wanted yeah it was, great. It was, it was yeah. great we had brekkie which is how the brits say breakfast which is my new favorite thing. you guys don't say brekkie <laughs> no we don't we say don't brekkie say at all you just say breakfast yeah. just yeah. i don't boring right just breakfast guys it's brekkie anyone yeah. watching this commit to brekkie <laughs> brekkie's the <laughs> best your life an egg sandwich in the morning and then the best even though we had some really nice meals we had like masala sometimes we had uh, all, all great things but we had one day at reading johnny cooked for us uh, cheese toasties, which is grilled cheese, and then soup. That was my maybe my favorite meal of the whole week. It was week good, yeah. Because it was so hot and warm and made with love and so <laughs> fresh. The t- yeah. potato leek soup was on point. 
But just dunking that grilled cheese in the soup on a freezing day nice. for lunch was – Oh, yeah. I, I'm great. salivating right now. It was the best was lunch, great. I think. Johnny was yeah. great. He, he, he was one of the site managers at the Viking site, so he was kind of like a friend of a friend. And so I met him on, the, on this job, and – he was the site manager, but he was also helping with like making sure the generators are running and then also helping with kind of costume stuff. And then was also doing all the cooking on site in, in the kitchen that they had there. And they just took great care, care of us there. It was like such an amazing shoot. And he was very much part of the family. And uh, yeah, his food was just on point. It was so wow. good for morale when we were struggling. And yeah. he just always had a smile on his face too. He's just a great guy. Always yeah. smiling. Even though sometimes we're making his life difficult, still yeah. smiling. Absolutely. You know, that goes a long way. Now, you guys did, from what I heard from James, deal with a bit of a diva. More than one. If you yeah, got, yeah. We had a couple of divas. A couple of divas, yeah. there's a big one. If you guys... We're not going to... Yeah. yeah we, I mean, we don't have to name specifically. We have to be careful because uh, given the kind of issues we had on set with one individual in particular, it's kind of like, depending on what we say on air, we'll probably create more issues. Yeah. Like we're yeah, dealing so with that kind of person. We just had a tough time with some time. Some people... Yeah. I mean, it's a movie. You have 43 people on set. Not everyone's going to get along. Not everyone's going to be happy with the conditions, even though they agreed, even though they offered up gear and everything like that. But, like, it's not everyone's going to be happy on, yeah. on a movie shoot. Understood, yeah. And so we just kind of had to deal with it. It was a problem that, you know, we were trying to figure out as we went. We had a couple options, like, how do we work this with the script? Do we change the script? But we, we basically stuck it out, and we figured it out at the end of the day. Were there uh, any injuries <laughs> on set? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Really, there are only two bad ones. Yeah. Um, Sarah, would you like to talk about those? <laughs> we, were, we were very lucky because, you know, we, we, were, we had, honestly. like, 20-odd stunt people. You know, aluminium and steel swords, stunts. We set people on fire. We had a 27-foot high fall yep. into a box rig. Um, two 10-foot high falls. Two 10-foot high falls. We had, there was a shot I wanted where we had about, I don't know, 18 people doing stair falls, all rolling down the stairs at the same time. And amongst all of that in a four-week shoot, we had really three injuries, and they were all... Our worst injury was self-inflicted, and it was a cut finger. <laughs> Sarah. So we were really lucky. <laughs> what, what happened, Sarah? I believe it was uh, your finger. Yes. Yeah, so my my finger on uh, my right hand. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so what was... We were, we were out in Reading. He literally just put the microphone <laughs> you, in you, you, you dropped it again. <laughs> yeah. so you're like, thank you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um... Okay, I'll start. Sarah, hold the microphone <laughs> right up to you. Get we up there. We want people to hear the story. Right here? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> if you can hear yourself, that's good, yeah. I can hear myself. No, but now you can really hear yourself. See, so talk. Yeah, okay. There you go. All right, all right, okay. All right, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right, all right okay. Um, yeah, so I was, we were out at Reading at the Viking Village, um, and we were doing a shot. What was it? Like some guys coming by these guards or whatever, but the hut that we were filming in front of um, had this like black tarping on the bottom. Um, and so I was just trying to cover it up so that we wouldn't see the tarp in, cause like obviously tarp's not Viking era. Yeah, no plastic um, out there. Yeah, yeah. it's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> Unproven. We just haven't we just haven't found the tarps. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, yeah, so I was trying to cover that up. So I was picking some ferns out of the ground um, to use that to cover the tarp. And like I went. That's to a pick small up... weedy plant. Describe. Well, the ferns they were they were dry as hell. They and were. I, I, were they dead? Were they dead? They friends? were. They were like dry, dying. Friends. Yeah, like yeah. dying, like very pale. Kind of end of season, brown, dying yeah. off. Yeah. So yeah. they're pretty harsh. They're pretty hard. They were. Yeah. So when I went to pick one up, instead of the fern coming out of the ground, it just like the ferns uh, got slit in half, and it like the it's like a freaking razor blade. Mm -hmm. Like the it was so freaking sharp, so it just sliced straight through my finger. It fucked her up. It, oh man, it, it was went gross. Through. It cut it down nasty, to my tendon. It yeah, was it cut bad. down to my tendon. You Oof. could see all my fat coming out. Like, oh, but her was... reaction was so like she just turned around annoyed, and we were like, <laughs> I was "Are so you annoyed. okay?" And she was like. <laughs> just shaking her head and we we're like sarah are you okay she was like i have just injured myself yeah i just need a minute and we we're like are you okay she was just like nope <laughs> and it was like so chill wasn't it it was like so calm and then she yeah. came up and was like look and it was honestly it was a sight oh my god i was with her for like a minute by the tree and you just kept flexing your hand open i'm like stop yeah. it that's gross, that's gross. <laughs> but i couldn't look away and i could just see muscle tissue i could see adipose could tissue see jelly. tendon it was yeah. Ugh. nasty Ugh. man it was yeah it was a good good cut it went deep it was yeah it was not i mean i'm i'm ex-military and i've seen my fair share of injuries and this one made my stomach turn Damn. that's how nasty it was Holy you know? shit. And like, yeah. the shitty part was 
Sarah had to film stunts that night. We had to do an entire a with village, that hand with a well, so, with, yeah both her hands. We had to do an entire village Viking raid, like a night raid in mm -hmm. a village, yep. and she's yep. one of the main characters. And we're like, Fuck. and this badass fighter who you know does all this awesome stuff, like the leader of the protagonist group. She's mm -hmm. the leader, and it was kind of like now she has this limp hand. Damn, that can't do anything. Yeah, but I didn't let that take me down. Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> went right, right, went to A and E. And H S. How many stitches did you get? So I got four stitches. Uh -huh. Um. In this hand, and then I got glue and butterfly bandages on my pinky. Um, yeah, and it was like, God, it took me five hours to get through A and E. Yeah, yeah, it took me five hours. The lady who stitched me up though did an amazing job. Um, shout out to her. She like numbed me up so good. She gave me a couple extra stitches. She was only gonna do two. Um, this but... is like dirty talk for healthcare. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> she numbed me up so good. I'm gonna numb you up, girl. I'm gonna numb you up. Girl. Numb you how up. excited yeah. Sarah's getting? <laughs> I, yeah, she did an amazing job. You, your face glue it was so talking good. about her. It was so good. Um, but yeah, and then five hours later, I walked back on set and then did a whole bunch of fight scenes and stuff. Wow, like a true stunt performer. Damn. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta do She's what you gotta go. do. She's good to go. Yep. And she let us pull our stitches out, which was fun. Yeah, I that did. was fun. like a week I later. Did let them pull them that out. was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I've never done that. You've before. never gotten stitches. Never have. Yeah. I'm convinced I'm invincible. <laughs> you're not invincible. I've never you're, broken a bone. You're, you're not I've invincible. Never had stitches. You can't, you, you can't break me. Dude, you, you ever had, seen Unbreakable? Your knee got blown out in high school. It didn't break though. <laughs> <laughs> it got dislocated. It went right back in. <laughs> Six months later, popped right back in. <laughs> same same day, popped right back in. No issues except for lots of PT. But you know, I'm still unbreakable. <laughs> didn't break anything. <laughs> Ridiculous. What was the other injury? Um, uh, so one of again one of the actors who was our biggest problem, I would say, uh, in my opinion, derailed the whole film. Right from mm. my point of view as a director. Um, on day three of filming, after being told multiple times, do not fuck around with the weapons, because that's how accidents happened, we had one of our actors fucking around with one of the weapons while we were off shooting another scene, and an accident happened. Obviously, he didn't mean to do it. Flew out, the weapon flew out his hand. And our villain, our antagonist, one of our lead characters who had just arrived from America that like day, mm -hmm. hit him in the face with it, and he had a massive lip, blood everywhere. <sighs> And it, I just felt shit because this guy had flown all the way out from America and he was ready for his first scene the next day and he had this massive lip for it. Yeah, Fucking he was just a. helping out on set too. And he's there, such yeah. a nice guy, yeah, such he, a talented yeah. actor. He's a sweet Did guy. you hide it with like a bunch of makeup and prosthetics? Well, fortunately, yeah. 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 All of our characters had war paint and so we were able to adjust a little bit plus Sarah is a magician with glue. Um, for she, she had to glue his lip every day before yeah. medical grade makeup. glue. Yeah, because it was cut open. Yeah, it was, oh my yeah. god, it was cut open. Yeah. But it was massively yeah. swollen. Jesus. It was huge. It was yeah. it was just to the point of like if it had been any worse than it was, he would have had to go get stitches. Jesus. So we got really yeah. lucky with uh -huh. that aspect of it that he yeah. didn't need stitches. Did you but film like, him from one side so it wasn't revealed? Not well, really. No. Yeah. no. It was the first day of shooting for him was a, a campfire night scene, so we pretty much got away with it where you can't really tell, not really any close ups on him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the darkness helped hide it yeah. as well as the black war paint helped a lot yeah okay. we, we've made all his mouth black with kind of some designs running down his neck so we changed the design of his i guess his face mm -hmm. makeup whatever you want to call it and um we we got away with it, it was and problem also solving, yeah. he was an absolute champion you know he didn't complain he didn't moan yep. he was a little bit gutted on the day he was like my first scene's tomorrow and i can barely talk you know um poor guy but he yeah. just kind of didn't complain didn't moan got on with it did the best he could every time it came open he just was like sarah can you re-glue it and that was it. We just kind of cracked on and, and, you know, it was just people like that going above and beyond and just kind of going the extra mile, despite what was setting us back, just really is what held the film together. I honestly um, forgot about that. I totally forgot yeah, about that. I did too. There's that many bad things that happen. It just kind of goes. Because like, that was terrible. That was the first week of filming. And, day oh my three. God. Yeah. Day we, three. Yeah. Oh my God. And we were off shooting something else that we were on this massive yeah. location. We're like, all right, we'll, we'll be back in like an hour. We're going to film a pickup shot or, or a scene over there. What's the worst that could happen? And then yeah. we come back and <laughs> Sarah's holding a uh, cloth to his face and, and it's blood covered everywhere. Blood. And me and Nathan are like, what the fuck like, happened? What the fuck happened? We've been yeah. gone for 45 minutes. How, yeah. how did this happen? <laughs> oh my God. And terrible. yeah, that was day three. And that was on that day. That's when I pulled James to one side. And this this particular actor, I was like, I want him off set. He's one of our leads. I was like, I want him off set. I'm done. Like, I can't. And it was day three. It yeah. was like, you know, we're yeah. doing a 20 day shoot. It's yeah. like, we'll do reshoots. I'll figure, I don't care. Like, 
uh, that was like the final line. Mm. Uh, and then James went proper Hollywood and was like, can we can we kill the character off? <laughs> yes, I was like, that was my first suggestion. Was like, I was like, oh my God, you're so Hollywood. I love it. <laughs> my thing was like, let's just get rid of him and well, we'll recast yeah. him and then we'll figure out how to shoot the days we're missing. Like, we'll mm. just figure it out. Yeah. Um, I'm sure everyone will help out because everyone's so committed to the film. And James is like, that's not happening, but let's kill the character off. <laughs> yeah. So we started talking through like rewriting the script and I was like, this is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so Hollywood. I get to kill someone off now, but we couldn't do it. So oh, uh, yeah. we kind of changed how we approached the situation, uh -huh, and that yeah. managed to get us to push through for another week or so. Okay, we had no money. We couldn't reshoot. We couldn't redo yeah. things yeah. like that. We couldn't go back and do all this again because we were at, at the locations we shot for the first three days. We didn't have them again, mm -hmm. so it was basically impossible to reshoot. And then killing the character off kind of wouldn't work either. So we just stuck through. Man, mm -hmm. we just stuck it through. We just had to kind of. Put, get more people involved kind of as part of the safety team and uh, just be a bit more vigilant and kind of just anal for want of a better word about how we were doing everything and very micromanagey to kind of mitigate what was going on around certain people on set. Not everyone, but particular people. And that seemed to help yeah. for a while. Yeah, but I think that some people, specifically the person that did it, doesn't realize that they almost killed the movie after three days because no. if it hit him in the eye, yeah. if yeah. it hit him in the eye, it could have lost an eye. Yep. Yeah. And the movie would have been shut down yeah. after three days of filming. Yeah. That's how close we were to it. And then we just had to deal with it from going on. We yeah. just got we got very unlucky, but also very lucky at times. Like no rain at all while we were filming, basically. Insanely lucky, but still having to deal with problems constantly like that. Yeah. All the time. But like if it rained the whole shoot, we would have been fucked too. Oh, if it, yeah, if, I think if it had rained, the film wouldn't have, we wouldn't have seen it through. Yeah. The amount of issues we were having and morale killers. It was great because the majority, I wanted, it was very much on the project. It was very much the minority ruining it for the majority. Yeah. For sure. the, the majority of people on the shoot had a fantastic time. Nearly everybody involved messaged me like, let me know when the next fucking project is. Mm -hmm. Like, we loved it, want to come out again. That's great. And they're like, yeah, some, sometimes some of the days were tough. But it's cool. We were there to make a film. It was exciting. Uh, a lot of the stunt guys, it was their first time on a set. So overall, it was like really well done and like really well received. But it was very much kind of like, you know, less than, I want to say less than five people. It was like we had 43 really people at, on set the most, maybe three people weren't having a good time. Too bad. Yeah. 40 people yeah. were having the time of their lives. Yeah. You know? yeah. Even yeah, though yeah. we're all tired, we're exhausted, we're in England filming a movie. Like, this is the best. Yeah. It was yeah. so cool. Yeah. But that's what, that's what movie making is. Like... It's not. It's not sunshine and rainbows. Yeah, no, no exactly. It's not going to be easy. Yeah. Unless you're making like a Teletubbies. You're going to deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they had their problems. I'm sure. Tel I'm sure Teletubbies well, that is had all, their issues. It's all sunshine and rainbows, though. Yeah, but I'm sure it's yeah. not easy to film. Not every project has their like hiccups and stuff that you have to deal with, and it's like, yeah, you just run into that with every project that you do. Every project that I've worked on, there has been some sort of bullshit thing that we've had to deal with for some reason or whatever. But it's like. We keep going back to it because this is what we love doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, just love being on set. But just for the record, movies. Sarah's never been to Lebanon. <laughs> oh my god, she's never been. Even though she'll say it's it, it's a made-up place. She's never been to Lebanon. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Has she said it or? <laughs> yeah, you know, she talks about it a lot. You know, she's so <laughs> she's shown me photos. I don't know who she got to Photoshop. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that chocolate that's not from Lebanon that you showed me. That's not. It's not from. No, Lebanon. that's not a thing. Definitely not. A thing. not. Yeah, from Star Market. But I remember when, when we were filming, I remember on one of the days, we just had so much shit held us. Because, yeah, every project has its hiccups, fires to put out. It's, we're making films. You're dealing a lot of the time with people with egos. You're dealing with equipment that can fail. You're dealing with weathers and, and like, element that can sometimes be out of your control. Um, and, you know, stunts, things go wrong. People get injured. And then what happens if a lead person gets injured? Like, all our lead actors were doing their own stunts. What if one of them gets injured? What do you then do for the rest of the film, et cetera, et cetera? So every project has their stuff that goes wrong, but we just had like an insane amount because I'm cursed, which these two now know. Yep. Um, I told them I was cursed before we started shooting and they didn't believe me. And then it was no. like day five, they were like, we believe you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We believe day you. two, I believed you. Yeah. And then I remember we were, I don't know, maybe week two or three and James just turned to me and you named the director. I can't remember who it was. You were like... People say this director is like a dickhead on set, right? I can't remember who you're talking. One of the big directors, Cameron. Like, no, like, it's someone, yeah. A yeah, lot you were like, oh, apparently yeah. this guy's just, and he just is a dickhead to everyone on set. And James just like, I get it. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I totally get it. He was like, based on the experience we've had with like 40 people on our 20 day shoot, he was like, could you imagine doing this shit for six months with like hundreds of people and a hundred million dollar like, budget? Yeah, yeah, with all this money and all this pressure, and like, he was like, I fucking get it. Like, I, to mm, I totally yeah. get it, and I, it like really resonated with me because I was like, I can totally see how this over a long period of time can, I guess, change you. Can break a person. It's not that yeah. you're being a dick. It's that you just have to be 
court. You have to be curt. You have to be like adamant. You have to know what you want. You have to tell people we have to do this right now. We, we're on a time crunch. Yeah, you we know got I mean? shit to do. Every day yeah. for us was pretty much a roll of the dice whether the movie's going to end. Almost, you know, yeah. what I mean, we have so much invested as well as we can't redo these scenes other days really at all because it's such a, a tight script. Most of the crew is American. We're all there, and they all yeah. have to leave on a specific date. So yeah. pretty yeah. much every day was yeah. a risk. And so it's like the movie could end today if something goes wrong, yeah. which is so exciting. But put that on a level of a $200 million budget, and of course, I would be a fucking dick on set, too. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but oh we made God. the film. We did 20 days. All, all the filming was done. There wasn't any characters. We didn't manage to get people to stand in last minute. We had a day where I had 10 extras were supposed to come. One showed up. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, really nice guy called Paul uh, just showed up and he was like the. I was like you're the only guy who showed up he was like what so we had to use all the stunties and shoot it in a way to make it look busier than it was um, Man. and yeah but we, we made the film it was awesome we got some beautiful shots yeah um, we did did some amazing fight scenes Daniel Libera really cool our great cinematographer was, was terrific what kind oh, of camera did you guys shoot on he shot on red. Red. red yeah it's which nice. red was it um, I can't remember Komodo Komodo. Komodo. Nice. It yeah. was the Komodo. Yeah, yeah you're Daniel. Right. Daniel's yeah. a terrific cinematographer, and he, he was, was great. He was so ready for everything. We like climbed him up on top of <laughs> uh, walls, which was cool. Remember the, uh, yeah. the ten foot wall? We got this incredible shot that he did. But he was up for anything. He was an mm -hmm. awesome DP, and he was. He was. I'll be here till three a.m. If you guys want. He just didn't day. fucking care. He yeah. just loved the project. Yeah. Like we were setting people on fire, and he was just like, oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've never filmed someone burning before. This is sick. <laughs> yeah, at the time, it was That's like, great. Yeah. But he, what was good is he had this really plain face. Like you wouldn't know what he was thinking. And sometimes when he focused, he'd make a moody face. Oh, I love his. And you'd kind of be like, Are you okay? Like, and we'd do a shot, and he'd be really moody. You'd be okay, and he'd be like, Fuck yeah, I'm epic, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Time my life mate <laughs> yeah, i'm, I'm semi hard right now <laughs> <laughs> i remember so we had three different sound guys on the project and so one guy left and then we had the second sound guy and came in he was just there for three days he was local to reading where we were yeah. shooting mm -hmm. and so his first day of filming he came in in the afternoon and he was filling in on the guy who left yeah so yeah. he's filling in for three days for us he was, he was great he's terrific we had to switch the crew members out and a week two i was like we're done with these two crew members i can't work with them anymore so we we got them out mm -hmm. and then we had a new sound guy who was fantastic but he couldn't arrive till three days later yeah so we had could three... only do three days yeah oh so... yeah so the other i'm sorry yeah. yeah we had him for a week and a half so there was a three-day window from where we got rid of the first um crew member and we were bringing in his replacement mm -hmm. we had a three-day gap mm -hmm. so we um found yeah. someone this guy call him he comes in his first day of filming his first scene that he did audio for us we let two people on fire <laughs> it was crazy and we flew someone up in the air 27 foot like, four, yeah, yeah yeah so he yeah. had the craziest first day and i remember i turned him like how's that for your first day he's like this is crazy man <laughs> it's fucking mental that was also the same day that i cut my finger too yeah like all of those crazy stunts going to the hospital bringing in the new sign that all happened in the same day Yeah, because it was a night raid scene as well yep. so we yeah. had the high fall we had the the outside the village two guys sat on fire at the same time and then the attack on the village yep. and you'd been injured but then we got you back out and then during the night raid there was all these stealth kills and stuff and then a fight scene and then someone was thrown onto a fire pit did a full <laughs> body burn and this was this guy's first day. I think like one of the first things he shot was the high fall, right? Yeah. It's like yep. he showed up. It was like, yeah, that guy's falling out No, we were out of filming the hunter in a Dylan, uh, Dylan's fire burn with um, who else did the fire? Oh, burn? Dylan Becca. and Becca. Becca. Yeah, yeah. Dylan and Becca. that was the first thing he, yeah. sh he shot. It's like he showed up and just filmed this. That's where like, we were, yeah, that's where we were shooting. <laughs> Um, but it wasn't supposed to be like that because we had to re we had to move things around to please crew members who had left a few days before. So we were kind of screwed. So we had to do so much in that day. It that was pissed hectic. me off, yeah. man. I, mean, James, I thought James and I were really accommodating to the crew. We, we've literally changed our filming schedule, which was set around twice. the availability of our actors. Yeah. We changed it twice to keep crew members happy and they still weren't happy. We need to get rid of these guys. Like, I, I can't keep working like this. Um, and then I, from I, there on, we were pretty much on time for pretty much every day. Yeah. The first two weeks we were always finishing late, always my schedule. As soon as there was three people who came off the project um, between crew and cast, and as soon as we got rid of them, my mood improved drastically. <laughs> yeah. And we were, other than like maybe one or two days in the next 10 days, we're pretty much finishing on time and uh, on a bunch of days early. Yeah. Which was kind of like, it was like, what is this feeling? Finishing yeah. early. <laughs> finishing early today, 4.30, baby. <laughs> it's an inside joke. <laughs> the 4.30 thing. Lots of inside jokes. What was the most dangerous stunt that was performed on the film, you think? Well, you guys are the stunties, mm. so what would you say? I think J Jeff's high fall was probably... It's difficult to say, yeah. It's either that or throwing 20 people down, what was it, 90 steps of stairs? 
Yeah. Like, yeah. either the stair falls or Jeff's high fall. Well, Sarah, for our listeners who don't know anything about stunts and filmmaking, can you explain a high fall? Can you explain yeah. fire burn, full body fire burn, and, and okay. all the stunts we did? Yeah, so um, a high fall, basically uh, anything, like, over 10 feet, you start to consider a high fall. Um, uh, anything under is a low fall. Um, but, yeah, a high fall is just, like, falling from height, free falling. Yeah. Um, Nowadays, when you get into anything that's above like uh, thirty feet or something like that, usually they put you on a wire. They bring a rigger in and they. Or well, they bring in Damien Walters. <laughs> Assassin's <laughs> yeah. Creed, baby. Or they bring that guy in exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's just you free falling into either a box rig. Um, we like using box riggers because they're um, you can move them around. They're like you just it's just cardboard boxes with a little pad on top and you strap them all together and stuff they're really and that, forgiving that blows people's minds right there yeah we'll yeah, do yeah. high falls just yeah. into cardboard boxes but yeah. yeah so you you make the box so it's hollow inside there's a great shot yeah. yeah. behind the scenes of poor things of the big staircase emma stone runs down there's a huge pile of boxes right off the edge in case yeah. she fell and this isn't just like like there's a certain technique to setting up the boxes and stuff like that. So it's not just like you can go stack out a bunch yeah, of boxes don't do and that. go fall. <laughs> don't do that. Not safe. There's specific techniques to how you build the boxes and everything so that you're compressing. It's catching and compressing your weight in a certain way. All that stuff. Just yeah, don't try it at home. And even if you do um, it right, you can still get injured. Yeah, there's been you can people paralyzed get going injured. into box rigs. Yeah, you know, like that's a thing. So yeah, so we did a box rig. The other thing that you can do is an airbag, um, but we didn't have power out there and we didn't have access to an airbag. So the box rig is great. Um, and so yeah, that's a high fall. Um, and then uh, the stair falls and stuff that we did, it's just like, I mean, just as you just throw yourself down the stairs, there's techniques to how you roll down the stairs safely so that you protect your head um, and protect your body and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you're just basically just rolling down the stairs in a barrel roll sort of fashion and hoping that you don't run into the guy next to you <laughs> oh <my laughs> pretty God. much. I mean, it's like, yeah. that's why they hire stunt guys to do this stuff though. Cause like we can get injured and be replaced. Main actors can't be replaced like that. How do you do a fire burn? Um, so fire burns, there's a whole safety process that you go through to protect your body so that you don't get burned and stuff like that. There's special gel that we use. There's special um, fire resistant layers that we use. We prep them in certain ways. Um, and then you put your costume over all of your safety equipment and stuff like that. Um, and then you go out onto the spot and they fuel you up. We use uh, specific kinds of fuel for safety reasons. You can't just pour gasoline on somebody and light them on fire. That's not how it works. Um, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> um, there's specific fuels that we use and uh, specific ratios and amounts and all of that. Um, and then, yeah, you get, you fuel your performer up on the spot and then you bring the torch in and you light them up and you go up in flames. And it's like, you either go for as long as you can and still until you start to feel hot. Um, you don't want to go past, like, like if you start to feel yourself burning, you've gone too far. Like you want to start putting yourself, get put out when you're starting to feel hot. So, uh, um, so for a few seconds or so, they won't, you won't feel the heat. No, I mean you. You from feel the flames, the, obviously. You feel the yeah. warmth. Yeah, it, yeah. it depends, but yeah, warmth. you can feel yeah. it. Uh -huh. Um, and it's like like people who do fire burns, like that's their specialty. Like you get you get used to feeling that warmth and stuff. So somebody who's never done a fire burn before, feeling that initial heat and that initial warmth can be really like jarring and scary. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you feel the heat. Um, but it's like learning. Um, learning within yourself where's the line between I'm warm but I'm not burning and then I'm hot and I'm going to start burning soon. Mm -hmm. So you have to find that line. And then there's also a period as well when, when you give the signal or when you go to ground when you want to be put out, there's also time that passes there as well. So you can't go, right, I'm burning now, I need to be put out because then you go to the floor or you make your signal and then your safety team have to get to you and yeah. then fully put you out and then cool you down. So there's like another five, 10 seconds sometimes time where if you're already burning, that's 10 seconds of extra time you're going to be mm -hmm increasing the heat and feeling that heat yeah. for before they put you out so you kind of have to kind of preempt it in some cases exactly right? yeah yeah yeah. or if it's just like if you know what the shot is or the scene is it's like you have a set time limit that the person's on fire and then they go down or they hit a certain mark and then they go down there and then they get put out um although i will say the hardest i think 
not hardest, but like the worst part about doing a fire burn, which blows people's mind, is not the heat or the being lit on fire at all. It's the freezing cold that you have to deal with, with when you're getting prepped, when mm -hmm. you're getting the, because the gel that we use, we have to keep ice cold because we want a really cold barrier so that the heat, the fire um, has to burn through the temperature of the cold mm -hmm. gel first before it can actually get to the gel and then to your body so i the worst part about a fire burn is standing there in the cold waiting to I think get it's lit on fire on. i think when it's on it's okay but you know yeah. when you first put it on it's like that slimy yeah. top and it's freezing cold and you're like yep. <laughs> this sucks plus it has yeah. to go in every nook and cranny every, every yeah. crack in your whole body every, every, oh man everywhere. and then you in put on the ears. then you put on the card costume yeah yeah yep. oh my god so the idea is you you burn the costume and clothes never yourself yeah. Gotcha. So it's the costume on fire, not the performer. Uh -huh. Kind yeah. of really. Like, yeah. That's I kind mean, of how it should be. Yeah. yeah. Are your eyes closed when you're in a fire burn? Um, it depends on the type of burn that you're doing. Like if you're doing a full body, like a true full body burn, um, there's special masks and stuff that we use. So if they need the performer to see, you can. But um, otherwise, yeah, in that kind of instance, you would close your eyes. But if you're just doing like a back burn or a three quarter, three quarter is just like legs, back and like maybe your shoulders or something like that, um, you can have your eyes open for that. Mm -hmm. However, you do want to hold your breath for the entire time that you're on fire because you don't want to be inhaling all those fumes and stuff. Oh, yeah. Copy. And we but, had safety protocol on set. We had a great stunt team. Yep. An We're, amazing stunt yeah, team. Yeah, fire extinguishers, as soon as someone needs to get put out, we put them out. It was mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. It was an awesome day of filmmaking. That's yeah, wild. We, we had a stunt coordinator from Canada who's been doing this for years, very talented. Um, I don't know whether he wants to be mentioned, so I'm not going to say his name. Uh, amazing guy, lovely human being, and just came to help me out again. Heard about the project, was like, this sounds kick-ass. Really passionate about indie films, low budget, uh, even though he's done all kind of level of films. And just was like, yeah, I'll come set people on fire and coordinate for you. It's all good. And then similar scenario with our with our key rigger. That's the guy who does all like the wire and the rope and the, the pulls and stuff. Because we had a bunch of wire work as well. Um, and yeah, same scenario. Just wanted to get involved, you know, passionate about indie film. Just, just wonderful people who just, you know, this was way below their pay grade in time and mm -hmm. they just volunteered yeah. to come yeah. help out. And, you know, uh, it was awesome because it meant that we had this low budget film and we had people getting dragged around on wires with people going flying through the air, people on fire. It was incredible. It was awesome. And we had, for the crazy stuff we were doing, we had very, very few injuries. Yeah, our worst injury yeah. was literally your finger. It was my finger. Because it was a, a nasty freaking one. plant. Yeah, and then the only other injury we had, someone got, we were doing a fight scene at night and when it's low lighting and you're doing, working with weapons and stuff, when, you, when you're doing stunt fight scenes, there's this like space you have to keep between yourself and the performer to make sure they don't get injured. And then you use like camera angles to like make it look like that gap's not there. Yeah. And sometimes in stunts, shit goes wrong. You're closer than you're supposed to be. You get excited, you overextend, like whatever it may be. And in this scenario we had, it was, it was really dark. We had minimal lighting simulating moonlight and then like some, some like real fire. And that kind of messed with the performer's depth perception. So they got closer than they should have been. And one of them got hit on the head with a rubber ax. So it was like a fake rubber prop thing. Um, but it still cut him open good. He had to go get some stitches. But mm -hmm. that was like a really simple, straight line, stitched him up. He's all good. Yeah. Um, and, and we were good to go. So your finger really was the worst. Yeah. Those damn ferns, man. Those yeah. ferns. Yeah. Really just three injuries, three big ones. The lip, yeah. the hand, and the forehead. That's and it. that guy was such a trooper too. Like after it happened, he stayed in the scene yeah. until the scene cut, and then I didn't even know he'd been hit. Yeah, yeah me neither. Yeah. He just like got up after, and he's like, uh, "I think I'm bleeding, guys." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cut! And we were like, "Right, moving on." And then he kind of sat up, like, "I may need help." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's had, such yeah. a trooper. And we had so many issues. Nathan has this. Gr Nathan's a very talented guy. He's very interesting in terms of his background. Sorry. Dance, kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dancing background, Multi music background, yeah. stunt background, acting. So he's, he's a really, really interesting guy. And one of the I favorite. James wants to marry him. <laughs> I mean, he's taken. <laughs> he's taken. And also at my wedding, set myself on fire. Set myself on fire. No way. way. Yeah, yeah, me and wow. my wife set ourselves on fire at the wedding. But yeah, one, so of your, cool. one of your talents, which is my favorite, is your, your knack for improvising songs. And oh, so, yes. <laughs> yes. Fuck yeah. So when we had like 40 of us on Take set rage. at location. <laughs> uh, was it Silverstone or Coventry? Which one is the cottages with the farm? Silverstone. Silverstone, Silverstone yeah. yeah. So we had long days, but we had a bunch of people there. And for some reason, Nathan's guitar got taken. And I was playing with it one that day. That was wild, right? Like yeah. we had no space in the vehicle everything was crammed in i was having to hire extra vehicles and put everyone's luggage and we had like 30 people from america or like with people from six countries came right mm -hmm. and we had all this stuff there's no space and for some reason rocky brought my guitar yeah. 
like found space and was like, here's your guitar. Yeah. And then we just had it. And then one evening you started playing. It was right? our first weekend, like our first day off. It was like a Saturday. And like yeah. I, I slept in a little bit. And then I'm like, hey, can I play your guitar? It's just chilling over there. It's bubble wrapped and everything. And I started playing around with it. And then that, like a few days later after a night of shooting, or was it that night? It might have been after filming. We yeah, just, it was, because this is why Ray started, because Sarah kept telling us we had to go to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so then yeah. Nathan just took out the guitar one night after filming and just started making up songs about me and Sarah. It was mainly was, about James, because, yeah. like, and I have to say this, like, this, I would not have got through this process without James. James was, like, a knight in shine and armor, honestly. I, I'm, I'm so happy I've been my right-hand man. There were so many times where, like, I lost my way or I crumbled into despair or, like, something had happened and I wasn't sure how to deal with it. Like, oh, and you were like, Hollywood baby, let's kill this guy. <laughs> um, or like, oh, do you know, like I want to do this shot, but I don't know the name of it. So I don't know how to explain it. And James would just know the name of the shot and then say it to the cinematographer and then they'd be like, oh yeah, okay, great. And then, well, not only like, would he know the name of the shot, but he'd reference what movie it came yeah. from. Yeah, and like, you're like a knowledge yeah. power. So it was just like, you was like, I can't explain how like grateful I was to have you on set. And so I had the guitar this one day and I just started writing songs about how much I love James. I think they I was like- very intimate. Part, I was part delirious by this point, like sleep deprived. It was so late. Yeah. It was like 11. We had to be up at five. We were like, fuck yeah. it, just do another song. We were song. knackered and it was like me and James and we were playing the guitar and like the first one was called James and it just goes dun da dun da dun da dun, dun James dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and you just do that and everyone chants it and then you just take it in turns to say something nice about James Aww. like that's the song Aww. and then it progressed so then I wrote a song about James called Moist and then <laughs> <laughs> James makes me moist 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 in the morning moist in the evening <laughs> moist. <laughs> moist so we wrote this song and everyone was kind of singing along and everything and then we wrote James has got a big schlong <laughs> Because I'm just a true believer, James has a big schlong. <laughs> it's like, he's good at everything. He's had my back throughout this. There's no way he's going to disappoint me down there as well. <laughs> so I wrote, James has got a big song. So I wrote like all these songs, right? Um, and then everyone was joining it. And then at some point, Sarah walks in being all serious and like, oh, did you guys forget we're shooting a fucking film? Yeah. <laughs> we need to be awake at like 5 a.m. tomorrow doing all this shit. And it was like it's midnight like, at this point. Yeah, You've gotten, it was what, so two late. Hours of sleep and we were like before? half asleep. Yeah. And, you know all the yeah. time so she came in and was trying to shut it down so just in that <laughs> oh. moment i wrote a song called rage because <laughs> she made me feel rage i was like you're interrupting something beautiful <laughs> <laughs> so i wrote the song called rage which is about sarah the lyrics are we hate sarah <laughs> it's just like she came in was like guys you need to go to bed i was like we hey sarah we hey sarah and then so it became the thing and then um sarah's who we hate rage and that's the song right and then there was this verse and everything and then it kind of just fucking spread like wildfire it right it really did we didn't think it was gonna and then every time we kept playing and sarah was like all right fuck you guys went to bed yeah. <laughs> and then we keep playing and then she'd come out like 20 minutes later, like guys seriously and then we'd just be like we <laughs> anytime she came and tried to like shut down the party we would just sing it and then people started being like what's this song we're hearing and then the next day on set people were coming up to us and being like apparently you wrote this song called rage and it's like the best song ever <laughs> and then they made like a, a line dance to it like the they crew did, that's yeah right. and then all the crew knew it and it became just kind of like the anthem of the film yep um that's and, amazing. And I'm going to record it for your birthday. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've asked for an you. orchestral version for my birthday. Yeah. It's, it was I incredible. heard that there was a lap dance and a dance off oh in, a, in, a, in a hotel room. Yes. <laughs> Should we talk about that or no? I don't know. Maybe not. We can talk huh? about that. Well, to, we can talk about Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> so Dylan is the one responsible for that. And he lives his life absolutely committed to the game. What are the odds? Yes. And he will never go higher than one out of seven. And so yes, explain ever. the rules of World of the Odds. This was the best part of the shoot, maybe, besides the songs and filming a movie, was this inside game that we were all playing for weeks. It was incredible. What are the odds? And Dylan is the heart and soul of that. Yeah, he really yeah. is. Dylan's the best guy ever. He's, yeah, he's my, just he's my the son. best human being. Yeah. We went to this pub and they thought he was drunk and he was just being himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like genuinely trying to kick him out thinking he was drunk. And we were like, he's, he's, he's like, drinking I think water. had too much to drink. He's like, he's been drinking water all night. <laughs> he's just the most fun person I've ever met in my life. He's an incredible person. He's an amazing human. Yeah. And also, like, again, he carried the film in so many ways. Yeah. He yeah. went above and beyond just everything we needed doing. He would do it with a smile on his face and he would sprint. You know, there was this one day we were in Coventry and the food had been delivered and we had this little awesome buggy that we'd hired to get around. Oh, that's and Rocky really had sick, gone up yeah. and got the hot food and driven it down in the buggy and there wasn't room for Dylan and the dessert. And so everyone was like happy eating away, not complaining, 
But Dylan was worried that people didn't have their dessert, so he ran the whole fucking way carrying like 40 desserts or something. Oh my god. Like at least so, a mile. Like yeah, a I mile. wish we filmed it because it was like everyone was like looked up and Dylan's like long hair was flowing. <laughs> and he was like running with the desserts. Like, I have the desserts! I'm coming, guys! And like no one had even finished their mains. And it's like that's the kind of commitment this guy has. And, yeah. and, and we, we just love him. He's great. Yep. And yeah, he commits to this game. What are the odds? So you just say to someone, you know, um, what are the odds you do? And you just say this stupid thing. It could be anything you want, right? Um, uh, like you know. one of the things he had to do was he had to talk in a Mickey Mouse voice to one person in particular anytime we weren't on set. Yeah. yeah. So for like a whole week, all we heard was Dylan talking in a Mickey Mouse <laughs> yeah. voice. So that's the game. Like you say, like, hey, Dylan, what are the odds that you'll speak in a Mickey Mouse voice all for the rest of the day? And then they have to say one out of whatever. Usually you do like one out of 50, one out of 100 because you don't want to do the thing. Yeah. But Dylan started doing it where it's like one out of seven because what's the fun in not having to do and the thing? And he'll never go. It doesn't matter. You could be like, what are the odds you move to Australia, change your name legally, and you know just relocate <laughs> and live there for the rest of your life? And he will genuinely say one out of seven. And if he loses, he will do it. He will. He, he will. will commit. How do you will lose? Commit. So you basically everybody loses. <laughs> That's the thing. Like it's it's a crazy. It was a war, but it was so much fun. So it could be like, hey, uh, Nathan, what are the odds that you have to drink a beer out of your shoe, something like that? And so Nathan mm -hmm. will say, oh, "That's a good one." It turned into one one out of seven every time. So uh -huh. basically, Nathan will say one out of seven, and then basically one person counts down three, two, one, and out of the between one and seven, if Nathan and I say the exact same number, uh -huh. we have to say it at the same time. He has to do it. So if I say Nathan, what are the odds that you have to eat your shoe, Sarah? Three, two. One. I didn't say my odds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what is, what you gonna let me say my odds? What, Nathan, what, what are the odds that you eat your shoe? <laughs> one out of seven. Okay. <laughs> Sarah. Three, two, one. Four. Two. Oh. Oh. So, and if we both said four, Nathan would have to eat his and shoe. And so since you guys are doing this all day, there's just the odds are just gonna people are gonna say the same number. It was a, a bunch battlefield of because yeah. everybody was playing it. You'd walk into a room and then you'd get ambushed by like ten people. You'd mm -hmm. walk into a room and someone would be like, "What are the odds you go to bed for the rest of the night?" And then you'd be like, <laughs> "One out of seven, and they wouldn't get you. And they'd be like, "Damn it!" And then someone else would be like, "What are the odds you make me dinner for the next week?" Uh -huh. And like it was just nonstop. But with Dylan, for some reason, when I play, what are the odds with Dylan? I always get him. I <laughs> always get him. Like and there's like ten. So row. yeah, it was yeah. like insane. Like the the streak we had where every time. And so now every time I go, Dylan, what are the odds? He always goes, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's, it's like, just somehow with Dylan. I can't get anyone else, just Dylan. Mm -hmm. So he ended up doing all these crazy things, which is the lap dance you mentioned. And uh, this was all like offset behind closed yeah, doors. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like yeah. this isn't, this was on weekends off and stuff like that. Um, so that's what you're referring to. There was one night he hates pineapple pizza and he oh. lost the odds and he had to go and buy a pineapple pizza and eat it. And like, he had to like stare at us the whole time. Outside the, outside the bar, outside just see me yeah. puking In the up. rain. <laughs> he's like, he's like yep. gagging while he eats <laughs> And like half the time he, he loses the odds and we're like, you don't really have to do it. Like it's part of the fun is just seeing if you can get them to match. But once you get him, he'll do it. So it's like with yeah. the pizza, it was like, dude, you don't have to. And he went, he bought a pizza, he stood in the rain, he was puking and still eating it. <laughs> and we were like, Dylan, everyone has said you can stop. Like you can come back, you know? I respect that. He has some very embarrassing ones that we won't bring up here that he still has to do. There's one where he, he had to sit on your lap? Well, the one time I lost one, so I, Nathan odds on me, and I had to have someone sit on my lap after for every meal for a whole day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, that's right. So Nathan, I mean, Dylan's a big guy. He's like 6'2". He's, he's a stocky guy, so he had to sit on my lap for dinner, for lunch. It was like, does anybody want to sit on James's lap? And Dylan was like, me! <laughs> I'll fucking do it! I took a great photo to that, too, the three of us, yeah. <laughs> and then, I think my favorite one was, I can't remember who got you. It might have been me, if not, probably Dylan. Um, it was what are the odds James as the AD can't speak to Hunter who was one of our lead <laughs> actors <laughs> for the whole like, day you have to ignore him for 24 hours yeah not just speak to not speak to him ignore his existence <laughs> so like the antagonist was coming up like hey what do you think I should do here and James just had to just blank him and like <laughs> look the other way and then Hunter obviously figured it out so then was kind of like leaning into that and then obviously all the direction yeah. was coming from me anyway and then and, and that kind of stuff so it didn't impact the film uh -huh. um, and there were things that were going to impact the film so we were very quick to be like hey that's an offset one only yeah, yeah. Uh, but some of it was on set and it was good fun uh, but it kept morale high and it was really good fun definitely yeah. I bet and if you're like if you don't know this game, you should try it out. It's yeah. fucking amazing. What are the it's odds? So it's odds so on your friend. The, I think the scariest day was where were we? What city were we in? Was it Liverpool during the day? And we were walking around and we went inside that costume shop. Oh, yeah. And so, like, we were Liverpool. odds. We were, what are the odds? In, yeah, Liverpool. What are the odds? And we were just in a costume shop with masks and everything. 
we, everyone was doing it to each other. And I don't know how no one got odds on. No in one there. lost it because it, it was like so, someone odds on Dylan to wear a Shrek outfit the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's Shrek, right. Shrek costume, face paint, everything. You did it to Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> so we were like every time we found a costume, hey Sarah, what are the odds that you'll wear this to? <laughs> you probably doesn't tomorrow. wear it all day, you know. Yeah, and yeah. it was ridiculous shit like uh -huh. that. And if Dylan lost, he would have done it. He would have yeah. walked around with a Shrek costume all day in Liverpool with face paint and everything. <laughs> yeah. On some random And it was Sunday. everything. It was like princess costumes in there and it was just like, what are the odds, you know? And we, there was like eight of us in the shop and we were all doing it to each other. And we were in that shop for like 30 minutes. The staff were following us around, like laughing their asses off. Like, <laughs> hopefully one of these guys loses soon, but no one lost in there. It was crazy. It. I was like, we have to get the fuck out of here, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is dangerous. This was like a, a Halloween costume shop, just for oh, yeah, 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 context. Yeah. Not like yeah. a film costume shop. And it was, so a, it was like two all floors. Those, yeah, two yeah. floors. There's two a second floors. floor. I was like, I don't want to go down there, man. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to find out what's down there. <laughs> I'm so scared. So scared. But odds, one of the odds is the funnest part of the shoot, I think. It was a blast. It was great. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. so fun. Everyone was having a good time. But you're, it was so good for morale. You're right. The morale yeah. was just, yeah, it, it just really kept things alive yeah. um, on, on the tough days. And then, you know, a lot of the things we spoke about being shit, like the hotel or like the actor we had problems with or crew and whatnot, that didn't just affect us. That affected a lot of people. There were a lot of people on set who um cared about me or james or sarah whatever like whoever it was they you know they were close friends who were helping us out doing favors or they cared about the film they were really invested in it so seeing these people behave the way they did um or things go the way they did uh and and knowing that that some of it wasn't our fault like the hotel we couldn't have done anything differently it was yeah. just really shit luck a trainee made an error um and so seeing the toll that had on us really kind of affected other people too so it was really good to have these little games and songs and rage and all this kind of stuff to keep morale up and keep like people happy and positive because it was very easy to kind of i think m most days everyone was happy but when things went wrong it would spiral quickly yeah um and morale would drop quick and that was tough when you're trying to like you know it's it's 11 o'clock at night it's cold it's dark and it's like right we've got a 40 person battle scene to do or whatever it is, 30 person battle scenes to do. And morale's just like low. So you have to get the morale back up. James would come in and say his laser focus line. Yes! <laughs> laser, laser focus. focus. Laser you know, focus. you want Tom Brady on them? Oh, that was my motto. Man. Laser focus. Tom laser focus. They started making fun of me about it. Yep. Well, because you got to get 40 people to shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> and get ready and get going. Is AD, AD, you're basically kind of running the ship. Uh, director's creative vision and Nathan's on screen pretty much the whole movie so yeah. I was like behind camera kind of running the set a lot which is super fun but I had to get everyone's attention I kept going laser focus everybody get, get focused we, get, <laughs> we gotta nail this take because we are running behind schedule which was pretty common but I took that from Tom Brady laser Tom focus, Brady the goat guy. He says that on 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 the sidelines. That's how he uh, twenty eight to three Super Bowl, and he he turned it around and won. But yeah, I was, was laser, laser focused. Laser, fo <laughs> laser, laser focus. I <laughs> turned North game round and we won. Legit, there we yeah, go. exactly. <laughs> I stole that. <laughs> they started making fun of me about it at the end of the shoot. The goat <laughs> man. The goat did it. But it worked, man. It was good, and it did get everyone focused. And um, it was good to have you there because as well, there was a lot of different kind of groups and departments in this. Like the crew hung out together, and they had their own space. And then like there was like the actors and the stunt performers, and then. A bunch of the kind of uh, rest of the crew who were like, you know, coordinators or riggers or whatnot all had a pre previous relationship. So James was kind of like the glue in the middle of all that that kind of held it all together. Um, and I think everybody just had like mutual respect for you. Yeah, it was, a, kind it was of kept awesome. Cruising. Yeah, but the three of us together, I mean, even though actress, stunt woman, director, writer, actor, AD, we still had 12 hats we were wearing. Oh, yeah, all, absolutely. All three of us. But the three yeah. of us were kind of running the entire shoot doing so many things that like a producer would do or an executive producer would do or, or a script consultant would do or a script supervisor. Would do. So we were, yeah. we were kind of just doing 20 jobs each at once. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going into this, I was dying because I did, I did like everything myself. Coming into this, I was like, I can't do it all myself. And I was like, I, it's adamant that I get a good producer. And I brought two producers on board and they both, long story short, they both stabbed me in the back and I was like, I can't work with these people, right? So I ended up just producing the thing myself. So then I was like, we need to get a different actor in to play the lead. I can't, I can't be in this and I'm not gonna be able to do it. And then we couldn't find an actor and then it was last minute and we didn't have an actor for the character of Bo. And we were still looking for someone for me. And then James was just like, well, we don't have anyone for Bo, so we have to find someone. So it was kind of like, well, I guess I'm playing Cole then. So then James was like having to step up to take on board some of the directing as well. And so at that point, there was no producer. You were having to like m like help out with me being on screen and things like that. Um, some of the actors were difficult to work with. So we were trying to like manage that the best we could. Um, and then, you know, like I said, the guy playing product doing the production manager, he's never done that before. So we're having to go into that. And when I started the shoot, I just felt like I was drowning. I had too many things going. It was like I was doing my own stunts. I was acting. I was doing the writing. I was directing. I'd done so much of the producing. Catering, the everything. Catering. Yeah. I'd, done, I'd done everything, like all the hotel booking and everything. And I, I literally felt like I was going to die. And so I think these two arrived and saw that. 
and immediately just started being like, we'll take care of this, we'll do that. This has been done, don't even worry about it. I'd wake up one day and be like, I have to do this fucking thing. And these guys would be like, we've already taken care of it. Mm-hmm. And so that's how these guys ended up going way above your job roles, uh, which I appreciate because I'm alive and breathing because of that. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how we ended up like doing this. And, and it, it was still too many jobs for the three of us. It was, yeah, it was, too it was much. a lot of work. But I mean, it's an independent film, micro budget, that's what happens. Yeah. You got to wear a lot of hats until you get it done. You know, if we had a $5 million budget, sure, maybe we could hire people for all those specific roles. But we became like a little family, though. We did, We got yeah. super Aww. close, the three of us. We, did, we yeah. were in the same hotel room every night, basically. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun. And every night, we would do a little briefing of, like, the following day. James and I would sit down and go, right, what's the shot list for tomorrow? What's this? What are we doing? And we'd go through it all. And then there was this one night where we were both exhausted. Oh, my gosh. And I don't think either one of us was awake at the same time. <laughs> no. But we were continuing the conversation. <laughs> And Sarah was just watching the whole thing. Yeah. One would, would nod off, the other yeah, would continue exactly. to be, would, would nod reply. off. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and like, so like one of them would wake up and I'd be like, you guys need to go to bed. And he'd look over and see James passed out or something like that. And then he'd pass out. James would wake back up and be like, oh yeah, so we got to finish doing this. <laughs> <laughs> We're really talking to ourselves. <laughs> like, we need to do that shot tomorrow. And then I'd pass out. And then That's James it. would be like, yeah, that shot, you're right. We need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they would, they would like fall asleep and wake up mid conversation conversation and continue on we were so sleep deprived we're, we're tired boys insane. tired boys that's hilarious <laughs> yeah so i think you slept for two days when you got back yeah it was pretty intense i was i was I catching up on sleep for for like a week dude i was catching up on sleep I we're bet. so yeah. sleep deprived yep. yeah i don't really feel like too many other people were it was because the jobs i think we were on there were yeah. a few nights don't get me wrong where sleep was shit for a lot of people yeah but i think generally speaking it really just really affected us three because the amount yeah. of, of weight we put on our shoulders well, that's good yep. leadership you have to make sure everyone else is good you, you like make sure everyone else is set make sure they're happy before you make yourself happy yeah yeah you know? and i think we really did that like the three of us i felt we achieved that um maybe it's not my place to say but it's kind of like it was always us getting into our hotel rooms last, always us leaving location last, making sure everyone had their shit. It was always us eating last. It was always making sure everyone had what they needed to keep everyone happy. And that often meant we went without. Um, maybe that was another thing that helped morale. I don't know. Yeah, I think when they see the people who are in charge are having it worse than you, that helps a lot too. Lead I, I, by I, example. Yeah, I'm, always, yeah. I'm, a, I'm all about being up first. So I like to be up first in the morning on James set. up every day. First, first yeah. guy up every yeah. day. Yeah. First up, that's my every thing. Every single day. Which that's just my like style, but... I like to do that. I like to set the tone. One person beat me twice. That's it. I'll never forgive her. <laughs> she was on, I was like, what the fuck are you doing up? You don't have to see until later today. <laughs> Flowing up my spot right now. <laughs> trying to do, I'm trying to do a thing here. I'm trying to do a thing. <laughs> well, how Make about me we, look bad. Let's take a break because Nathan prepared a pop quiz game for us. Do you have a us. pop quiz? Yeah. Okay. Let's see yeah. you want to do that. But before we continue, the best way to support Raiders of Lost Podcast is to, of course, become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of Lost Podcast. Sarah, why would you want to become a patron of our show i don't know why because would you, you want to become a patron? so many perks <laughs> besides friendship you get video messages you get access to our discord you get private watch parties merchandise Whoa. doesn't this sound cool that does sound cool yeah so bico you should, you should be a patron up. yeah you should sign up at patreon.com slash raiders of lost podcast also leave those five star rings and reviews on spotify and apple Podcasts because it helps us get seen on new platforms by new listeners also at 5,000 Apple ratings I'm gonna get a tattoo of Anthony's choice that's Ooh. how hype I am about this right I now I totally thought that wasn't real it's is real. that real it's absolutely it's real. real absolutely it's real. real fuck yeah we got quite a bit to go we're only at like 2,000 on Apple we'll get there man. we'll get there but it's we'll, happening we'll read out a review in a minute too you should and also... get rage tattooed <laughs> yes <laughs> I mean that'd be a good idea I would get <laughs> absolutely. I, would, I would do that but also I feel like Anthony has something worse in, in I want to do something pretty funny <laughs> no I don't want to you said you wouldn't do anything bad okay I'll do something I'll do something good you said you wouldn't do anything bad I'll do something good I'll do something good like that reality TV show, <laughs> like really, the belly button. Like, you ever seen this? There's this reality show yeah, where friends I know what tattoo. You're about. Another, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a there's a few bad ones on there. I don't want. Some, I won't get you a belly button. I don't one. want an asshole on my belly button. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be barbed wire around your belly button. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> Chicks will love it. Another great way. To, oh, oh, you think? All right, maybe. <laughs> Another great way to support our show is to just share us. Word of mouth is the best way for a podcast to grow. Just so send our show to everybody you know. And this episode, of course, is sponsored by our friends at MoviePosters.com, the number one place to get your posters online today. Be sure to use our promo code Raiders10 at MoviePosters.com to get 10% off your order right now. They have a huge selection of pretty much every movie and TV show imaginable in their poster library, as well as all sorts of sizes, framing, and even backlighting for your poster needs. So be sure to go to MoviePosters.com 
and use our promo code Raiders10 right now to get 10% off today. All right. Damn, you guys... I I always thought you guys had scripts for that bit. No, <laughs> no, no. I just, I said it 500 times. Just, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's muscle just, memory. It's just like built into my brain. Muscle Very memory. impressive. I yeah. wake up in the middle of the night, hey, another way to support the show. Drew <laughs> 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 was like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, Nathan. Man. You want to do this, this pop quiz game for us? Fuck yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. He said he's got some good ones. And he's gonna I do didn't some say I had some good ones. I'm saying there's like some different ones. Different ones, okay. Because there's some stunt questions in here. Nice. Oh. Us, you know, well, yeah, now that he's a stunt man. Yeah, yeah. Sarah and know. I have a stunt I background, yeah, so yeah. I thought yeah. I'd bring that in. And we should also, do a stunt episode sometime. It means you guys might get a question wrong. All right. Let's Maybe. hear it. Let's we'll hear see. it. Uh, there's three categories. Stunts, music, and then just kind of general knowledge. So which which you want to start with? Stunts. Let's, All right, let's go with stunts. Stunts. Go right into it. Yeah. Stunts, okay. Um... Look at the meditating. Do you want to do scores. one question and then you guys can answer and then I'll give the answer then? Or do you want to do like the five questions? Just then? do one at one a time. time. Yeah. Let's do it. Are so, you the li- part? so the listeners can do it too, yeah. I'll take part in stunts. Okay. I might have a chance at that. Yeah, she's yeah. only seen seven movies so yeah. <laughs> yeah. in her whole life. So besides You that, love she- cinema. <laughs> the other day we were talking about Heath Ledger and she had no idea who he was. Or, what? You know, like, no, yeah. no. It was... um. Claude Van Damme. John, John Claude Van Damme. Yeah, John Claude Van Damme. You, know, you no do idea. stunts, you don't know John Claude Van Damme? That's yeah. what we said. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. We you made her it? watch a couple of his scenes. Uh, yeah. yeah. The splits, I am bro. the worst the when it comes yeah, to movie insane. knowledge. I'm Some the worst. Some of the stuff he does. Right, okay, question number one. In a three-quarter burn, what pieces of the body are covered in fuel? Oh. So uh, I'm specifically after the areas that you ignite, not where the fire may spread to. So I would you, say you light the leg, legs, arm, and back. Torso and, sh- and back. Bear in mind, Sarah did say this earlier. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, it. fuck's sake, Sarah. <laughs> what do you think, Sarah? Legs. Actually, no, I'm going to say three-quarter burn uh, feet to waist. So feet, knees, waist. Okay, but I need to know if it's front and back as well. Oh, okay. I'd so say... you're saying front and back of your legs? Yes. And okay. you're... And you're saying front, so you're saying all your legs front and back. Yes. Okay. You're saying front, uh, leg, arm, front, and then the back of the back. The back of the back. Back of the back. <laughs> uh, go on, Sarah. Sarah will obviously know so the answer. So it is a uh, side of your legs that wrap up to your hips, up your back, and then down your arms, but nothing up above your shoulders. That is a three quarter burn. So did I get three quarters correct? No, really. No. I don't think, I don't think no. we can give either of you a point. She for just that. explained no. it, and that's not what we said. No, <laughs> so none we of you were wrong. listening. Yeah, no. I guess so. It was like eight years ago. Sorry, what did you say again? You said kind of. Yeah, leg. I said. Uh, the... You said front of leg. And no, arm. I said the side of your leg as it Yo, goes right, on the no, back. Right, no. of your Hold back. on, play back, play back. Down the arm. Yeah, we both it's, said it's, that. I just said exactly. I think you said front of your arms and legs, and then back of your back. So we can't give you that. No. If you said like, it was better than. His answer, it though, was yes. better it than was, his. Yeah, you were closer. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Thank okay, you. yeah, let's do it like that. So <laughs> Anthony gets the point. <laughs> okay, so what do you require or what do you need in order to do a slalom? How do you pronounce it here? A what? Uh, do you say slalom? A slalom? Slalom. What are you referring to? Slalom. You know what I'm referring to. In a car? You need a car. You need a car, obviously. <laughs> so you need a car. Yeah, or a vehicle. Or a vehicle. Okay, How do you pronounce okay. it? Slalom. Okay, next question. <laughs> so I said slalom, didn't I? I Well, I mean, here's the thing. You he have said so it five many times. different terms. He said it five times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's like, what are you talking about? Slalom skiing? Are you talking about slalom in a car? Are you talking about like a slalom on a bike? I would have accepted any of these answers. Okay. What I, do you require in order to do a slalom? So I would have said vehicle or car, motorbike, anything like that would have been fine. Okay, got you. But you ruined it. Well, that, that was a bad This question. is why the song Rage exists. Rage. <laughs> Moments we like this. We hate Sarah. <laughs> now you get we it. We hate Sarah. We hate Sarah. Sarah's who we hate. Rage. Rage. There we go. I hope you're singing along. I love that song. Sketchy. Okay. Um, Sarah, just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, please. Um, <laughs> okay. What is a header? A header. Ah. Oh, header. we did this. Um, a header. This is when... You should take something off the head. No, no. no. <laughs> what yeah, was it? Decapitation what was, stuff. Yeah, what was it? What was it? Um, Do you have any ideas, Anthony? A header. Fuck. Someone leads another person in a stunt somehow. Okay. That's, that's, okay. I can't remember what this was. Master James? We did this on set, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this happened in yep, the film. This did. happened in the film. And you definitely saw it. I definitely did see it. I saw a lot of things on set. Um, I forget. I forget. So, no answer? Oh, wait. No answer. Wait. 
There's no answer. Okay, let me give you both a clue. On. It's to do generally with high falls. Header. Oh, it's, uh, is it um the distance to the ground? No, that's for, the no. distance to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There could be a term for that. <laughs> no, I'm messing. I'm messing. <laughs> what was it? It's header. The technical term for that would be your free fall distance. Fucking Thank you. The free fall distance. Yes. <laughs> header. Um, is it when you fall forward? No. Is it where you? Is it uh where you? N- Put the the rope on where you fasten the rope or grip it. No, J- nope, James that's an angle. It's when because okay. it was in the in the tree high fall, right? When yeah. you flip forward. Yeah, 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 yeah gotcha. Okay, yes. falling head first. So you, yes. you yeah. So yeah, a header is when you fall head first, but then rotate one eighty to land on your back. Okay, that's kind of like a shitty front flip. All right, gotcha. Yeah. You, uh, so when you do the high falls, you always land flat on your back. Mm-hmm. So think about you're standing up, you kind of go into a front flip or a forward roll, you fall, and then you land flat on your back. So gotcha. It's kind of a three-quarter flip, right? Yeah. That was the um, craziest stunt, too. That was insane. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Um, it was so my favorite. What's your, you like backfalls the most, right? I do. I love backfalls. I fucking hate those. I love not being able to see the ground. Just I don't know what it back. is. Just diving back. doesn't matter how high you are. Just leap yep. backwards. Just fucking hate them. I Headers them. are the best. You can see the floor. You can choose when to tuck. It's great. What's crazy is how loud that was, the impact of when yeah. he landed on the boxes. Yeah. It sounded like a bomb went Because this is the thing. People think that those things reduce pain. Like when you have an airbag or when you have a box rig or something, it reduces the pain and you're being looked after. Like it's keeping you safe, but it's designed to decelerate you. And yeah. the decel can still rattle you. It can still mm-hmm. absolutely sh- like rock your world. Yeah, especially um, if you land wrong. Like yeah. there's proper ways to land on those things. Boxes are a lot more forgiving than airbags. So me personally, I would rather fall into a box rig than an airbag. Me um, But ask any stunt performer, everybody's gonna have a different answer yeah. to that. Um, but yeah, airbags are a lot more unforgiving because if you land wrong and you're not in a flat position, you can really like rock your you can really rock your shit. Yeah, I, I don't like really airbags. I find even on airbags, if you're landing correctly and you do the the, the, the gag like two or three times, it can still start yeah. to hurt. You're gonna um, feel it the next day for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's it's um anyway, moving on. Yeah. What is a taco? A ta- oh, like a taco, taco or a taco? A taco. Sorry. Okay. Ignore his English. What is a taco? <laughs> a taco? What do you guys think a taco is? A taco. Um, <clears throat> taco. It's not a bulldog. Oh, <laughs> fucking it's, another it's, stunt sound. I was like, why are you talking about dog sport? It's, but no, close, yeah, it's close to that, isn't it? It's close to a bulldog. No. 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 You could do no. a bulldog into a taco. Into a taco. Is he, are you getting, are you do, getting wrapped in something? Nope. No. This is something you could do solo. Yeah. You don't need another person. Is a taco when you jump into an object and wrap around it? No. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to That's think a of chipper. Like, are you fortifying yourself with anything for the stunt? Nope. No. Um, I I mean it depends on the landing that you have. I got it. You do a high fall while eating a taco. <laughs> <laughs> and you could call that a taco. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. That's a taco. Uh, I have no idea. I don't know. You guys are not getting anything. I'm I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you are getting these right at home, you should start a podcast called Raiders of the Lost Podcast. I know more. <laughs> It'll be fine. Uh, so, a taco, do you want to explain? It's, it's a type of wreck. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A taco is a type of wreck. So, it's when you land on your back, but your feet and your hips come up over your head. So, you look like you've folded oh. your body into a taco. Gotcha. It kind of looks like you land on your neck, but you don't. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Taco. And you can do that like from a bulldog, or you can do it as like a gun reaction or an mm. uppercut yeah. or something. You just throw it, it's self motivated. You float, throw yourself into the air, come down on your back, and fold your legs over. Yeah, gotcha. you want to land, you land like up here on the upper part of yeah. your shoulders, Shoulder and blades. it's just like ass up in the air, folded over. Yeah, and if you do really them right, they're really looking. sexy. They're a really mm-hmm. cool wreck. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. And then finally, what is an air ram? I figured you guys might know this. Whoa. An air ram. What yeah. a question. Right? An air ram. Is it when you have... There's no way these guys know that. I thought they might, because it's Cause kind of more is, to do with well, set. Yeah, but this is something that's kind of been windled out of the Yeah, you the don't really get industry. these anymore. Yeah, this is old school. Is it two vehicles just flying in the air and crashing into <laughs> each other? <laughs> that sounds like it. <laughs> No. <laughs> is it two people flying in the air and crashing? No. no. Okay, so it's that's a, a bulldog. It's a piece yeah. of... I'll give you a clue. It's a piece of equipment you use to help do some kind of stunt. Oh, is it uh, in the vehicle that smashes it to flip it? Uh, you can use them for that. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, but it's not called that. It's it, it's just an air cannon. It launches people up in the okay. air. Okay. Launches yeah. you up. Yes. Yep. You nice. got it. it. Launches you up in there. Oh, oh yeah. It's Anthony. It's oh. a That's right. pneumatic yeah. system on a piston that, when triggered on the pressure plate, launches somebody up in the air to whatever desired height you would like to launch them to. It's like a springboard 
and a transformer had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a machine that shoots you in the air. Yeah. Yeah. It's really and they're cool. gnarly. They're, yeah, they can be. They can be really. I hate Air Ram Day at Stun School. I, oh, I that love is, them. I think they're great. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's because you're not the instructor who's watching all these kids potentially. About to blow their knee uh, out. Yeah. About to blow yeah. their knee out. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Because it's like if they you don't step really use on them it, in a super rare now. Yeah. 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 If you step on it wrong and you don't get the right like trajectory for your body to go forward, if you just step on it and it shoots you up, you're coming back down on that thing mm -hmm. and it's launching you up again because it's just a trigger. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't get your foot all the way on it, it can snap your knee back. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Do you think it's like a piece of like the floor? which is loaded with pressure and when it's triggered it doesn't matter what position you are and where you are um if you're in good alignment or not if even if you're fully over it if you trigger it it throws all that pressure up regardless yeah. of that so if you've got bad alignment and it throws you up you can just like pop your knee out or, oh like, i bet get oh, kind, of, kind of injuries so fucking a. Um, but they don't really use them anymore um I can tell so i think much. anthony you got like one or two points there yeah it's debatable <laughs> <laughs> i got one and a half points james got zero so james won the stunt Nothing. round uh, okay, what do you want next? Just the knowledge or the songs? Let's do knowledge. Okay. Um, this first question is interesting. I'm going to accept multiple answers for it because there are technically multiple answers for it. What is considered the first Hollywood movie ever made? Whoa. If feature, you give me the a feature film? Feature film. And if you give me the year, you'll get a bonus point. But, um, first Hollywood I, movie. I, found, I heard this on the radio the other day, so I know the one I'm looking for. However, when I Googled it, I found another two answers. So, Trip to the Moon? I didn't see that on Google. That's a short. What year was that? 19 like 12 14 okay so there was one in 1910 the one i'm referring to is 1912 and there was another one in 1914 first hollywood film hollywood movie um what would be the first one um is it a feature length i think so what genre is it i have never heard of the film before hmm well, there's one in 1912, which I've heard of, which you'll know. There's one in 1910 that I guess is technically... I'm trying to think Hollywood. But I don't um, know if it's feature film. Um, I mean, first Hollywood film. That's a good question. I'm afraid to... I mean, it wouldn't be The Birth of a Nation. Oh, uh, so this is a short film. The one in 1910 is a short film. It's 17 minutes in length. Okay. All right. Short. Uh, Fuck. Or I'll accept the 1912 answer, which is a feature film. <sighs> what would be the first film ever? Hollywood film? I don't know. I don't know. What is it? So the 1910 one is in Old California, mm -hmm. which is 1910 American silent Western film. Cool. Um, and then apparently in 1912, they did Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, oh no cool. shit. Oh. Yeah, fair. All right. So they, on the radio, they said the other day that was the first Hollywood film. That's so a good I was fucking like, no question. fucking shit. That's on the radio? I was on the radio, yeah. Wow. No, so you listen to the radio still? What? Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. A lot of people do. I know. I'm just, I'm just curious. It's still there. Interesting. I, we're on there. a podcast right now. People are listening. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't listened to the radio in years. Years. Years, man. Years. Um, See, so yeah, I thought it was a pretty cool question. It's a great I was like, question. That's, an, that's an excellent question. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love that it was a Western. So that was 1912, I think, the, the Monte Cristo one. And yeah. then, yeah, the Western one was... Um, 1910 so that was technical um how many mortal Kombat films have been made live action oh. oh um i'm after proper live action legit full feature length mortal Kombat films i'm going five four yeah i think four so according to online it's three. Oh, what? it is just three yeah yeah more combat more combat annihilation than the, the new one they're making the okay. fourth one right now so they got 95 97 21 oh. okay wow it just feels like they more. waited a while yeah, they did. They were like, but they fuck. made like a short one, didn't they? In like 2012 or something. That was like a kind of short. I think it was a fan. I think made. it was like a concept one. Yeah, yeah, like, a, yeah I think yeah. it was a fan one, which was pretty cool. Um, in the film Sunshine, how does the name of the ship reflect their mission? Icarus is the Greek myth of flying too close. Point to James sun. straight away. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Fucking Thank love you. it. <laughs> love it. Great. Name the following composer. I'm gonna name some of his films. And as soon as you know it, shout out, you get the point. So film number one is The Fountain. Clip Mansell. Boom! Ooh! Anthony, my boy! Ooh! Fuck off. Wow. As soon as you said, I knew he was going to win that one. <laughs> like, Fuck yeah. Film composer, I don't stand a chance against right. Anthony. Uh, what was Keanu Reeves' film debut? Hmm, film debut. It's a tough one because it's not a big role. Not a big role. Um, oh man, that's a good fucking question. It's prominent enough, but it was a good film, and well, I thought it was a good film. He's a, it's a small role for him. It's a small it? role, yeah. He's not like the leader or anything like that, but it's a prominent enough role. Man, I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea either. Okay, um, I'll give you a clue. 
Patrick Swayze is the lead. You definitely don't have Patrick Swayze is the lead? I'd say he's the lead. Yeah, one or two leads. All right, is it Ghost? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he plays the Ghost. <laughs> it's not Demi Moore. It's, it's a sports film. I'm beginning to think you guys don't know the film. Swayze I don't know the film. sports film. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. So it's called Young Blood. It's an ice hockey film. Never seen it. Oh, Never seen and it. Keanu Reeves is the goaltender in it. Oh, okay, I'll have to yeah. watch that. And he's very, um, yeah, man. <laughs> he's very, <laughs> he's from Keanu. very he's, Keanu. He's very Keanu. Hawaiian. Yeah, he's very very playing young. hockey. Yeah, Patrick Swayze is. Um, I think he's the team's in captain, or he might be the enforcer. Oh, I know he was in a hockey movie. Yeah, it's a good That's film cool. as well. It's pretty good. Damn, uh, good questions. Good questions. These yeah, are the these best ones a guest ever brought. Fuck yeah. All right. Okay. We've got the music round yet. So that <laughs> round, you got Clint Mansell. You got Sunshine. So it's one point each, right? Yes. So you got nothing. Yeah. Well, that's to be expected. <laughs> <laughs> after, so after after Anthony's, stunt, she's like, I don't know. <laughs> so I think Anthony's still two points in the lead, right? That's right, baby. Oh, fuck. Okay. So you had a copyright issue. I was going to play some music, but now I'm going to fucking sing it. Yeah. Um, I don't even know the lyrics to half of these, so I'm just going to hum the first yeah, hum, tune. Hum it. <laughs> okay. Um, so you got to name the film. For this, the point. Is this a score or is this a song? No, it's not a score. It's like a song in, in, the, okay. in the film, yeah. Okay, so this is the first one. Son of man, look to the trees. Lift your spirit, set it free. I don't know the words. <laughs> Son of man, something, something. Doom, ba -doom, doom, doom. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing, bro. I got nothing. Uh, I'm going to go Apocalypse this. Now. No, no, no. Um, okay, let me do another one. Because you'll be in my heart, no matter what they say. From oh. this day on, now and forevermore. Tarzan! Do -do 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 -do. Oh, fucking Sarah gets it. What? Yes! Damn. I haven't seen Tarzan since I was a kid. Wow. Uh, Bill Collins. Bingo got a point. Oh. Bill Collins. Nice She's tying your score, Jay. <laughs> It's embarrassing because she's seen seven movies total in her whole life. Good thing one of them was Tarzan. <laughs> okay, question number two. Oh, God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Here we go. Near, far, well, Titanic. Rare. Sarah's winning this. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> two out of seven movies. Okay, this is going to be a tricky one. I'm going to set the music ambience first. Oh, sinner man, where you going to run to? Sinner oh. man, where you going to run to? Sinner oh, man, where you going to run to? What, what movie is this in? Oh, damn, on that day. So I ran to the rock. Please hide me, I run to the rock. Please hide me, I run to the rock. Please hide me, oh, oh, damn, on that day. I don't know. And I said, Rock, what's the matter with you, Rock? Can't you see? You guys don't know the song? I know the song. I know the, it's Nina Simone. Is it it's Nina Simone, yeah. okay. I don't know the film. It's got Piers Brodman as the lead. Piers Brosman as the lead. Is it a James Bond movie? It no. is not a James no. Bond movie. <laughs> Piers Brosnan. It's to do with art. Oh, it's, um, fuck with, with Rene Russo. That was what an the aggressive what, what the fuck's the movie called? <laughs> oh my god. Um, I can't remember. the. He plays an art thief. And Rene Russo, isn't it? Um, I don't know. The something. The fucking A. I don't know. I can't think Is of it. The Heist? No. The, the Thomas heist. Crown Thomas affair. Crown Oh, affair. the remake. Oh, fuck. There we go. Yeah. Uh, god damn it. No points to anyone. Close though. These I love good. that you got Nina Simone though. Oh yeah, Questions, I know, I know music. Means man. the song was yeah. recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing a great job. Okay, you get a, you only get a couple lines for this one. Uh, this is technically, I guess, part of the film kind of score. It was written for the film, I guess. So, um, <laughs> colossal we come, these renegades in a ring. Um, um, Where um, the lost get well, found the in the greatest showman. Of the circus king. Sarah gets the point. Yes. I've never, never, seen, I've never, it. Even never seen, seen it. I've never, never seen it. What? I'm oh, not shit. a musical person. Are you kidding me? Not a musical You've person. seen seven movies. Don't tell me that you're surprised <laughs> I haven't seen a movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think so. Now like, you get my reaction every time I you've never heard seen wow, a movie yeah, before. She decimated us. Yeah, so she's on, uh, Sarah's on, I think, three points yeah. now. So she's That's tying with Anthony. Decimated us. You, you've lost my I'm, I'm in the wind, man. I'm gone. <laughs> okay, number 10. Uh, this is the 10th question. So this is the last question. So I guess if either of you get this, you win. Okay. And then you get bragging rights. I'm just going to give you one line because it's the only line I know from the song. Okay. Like I said, I was planning on just playing these on YouTube. And then James <laughs> is like, no, you have to sing them. Um, okay. 
Accidentally, uh, I'm in love. Shrek! I'm in love. I'm fucking oh Sarah Winston. I love Shrek. That's like my favorite. I sound like two words. <laughs> I love that they didn't movie. even let me get my flow. Oh my wow. god. Wow. Yeah. Fucking Bingo won the movie wow. trivia. Wow. That's crazy. Holy shit. Wow. Well I done. I did not expect that to happen. No, yeah. I didn't either. <laughs> I figured she would even pay attention because it's like no point. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. And you didn't answer any of the stunt ones. You were kind of like. Well, because I knew them. Yeah, I knew yeah. them all. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Impressive. Uh, you know, music Man. and movies. Music wow. and movies. Wow. Well, Pico, music and stunts. Pico's yeah. champion. <laughs> music and stunts. There we go. Pico's champion. All right. Man. Holy shit. Well, so we, in addition to the songs that you wrote, we kind of came up with another one called, um, what was it? It's One Thing After Another. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Remember, it's We're back on Norse game now. After another, <laughs> let's get back in the Norse game. Yeah. Norse game have, yeah. Unless you have any more trivia questions. Fuck no. No, yeah. I can make some shit up. No, no. Let's get back into the episode. <laughs> because we there's so many things happening that I started making a list to kind of keep track, and I, I tried to remember as much as I could. It was that unbelievable, wasn't it? But there was one that I thought was hysterical because it was, it's, it's like felt like we were in an ant farm and just like a god or a being is just like shaking it just to fuck with us. Like we yeah. we have no control over this. Because there was one morning we were leaving Silverstone, and we woke up, and the power was out. And the whole, right, oh, right, yeah. Right, oh, yeah. Massive shit. farm. Beautiful oh farm. God. These really nice cottages, but the power went out. We had to leave at, like, 5 a.m. to get to the next location to film, which is like, a two-hour drive away. And all the power was out in the entire farm and all the cottages. And then also it was electronic gates. So electronic oh my gates God. were closed. Oh, yeah. But fortunately, prisoners. yeah, for like an, it took us like at least a half hour to get someone on the phone. Thankfully, it's farmers, so they're up early. <laughs> and there's there's another there's another gate that was that was uh, not powered by electricity, so we we're able to manually. But it was on it. the other side of the farm, yeah. so we had to drive through the. We had like a little exit near us. Yeah. But it was just a, we woke up and it was a nightmare because it was like packing up all our shit in the pitch black. Five Everyone a.m. Using flashlights yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it was like crack of dawn and. And then it was like, right, we've packed all our stuff. We're in the cars. Problem solved. And then it was like, we got to the gate and we couldn't get out because oh the gate God. just wouldn't open. So yeah. we were like, we're locked. And we have a filming schedule to keep to. It was a shit, shit show. It was a shit show. It was a nightmare. Oh my God. We got through the gates though eventually. But that was just like one little thing that was ridiculous. We had a little issue with hot water that, at that place too. Because yep. there's 43 people sh taking showers in like maybe six bathrooms or something like that. What else happened? Can you guys think of anything else? But it was stuff like that, like the power going out. It was just shit out of our control. But yeah. that's what I mean. Like there was stuff that happened, which it was like, that was badly organized. Fair enough. That's my, that's on yeah, me. Yeah, or yeah. like I was, I was wearing too many hats. So I made a mistake there. Fair enough. That's on me. But there was so much shit like that where like the hotel where they just didn't book the rooms properly or like the power just randomly went out. And it was just like, why does this shit keep happening to us? Like, what did we, <laughs> what, what did we do? Was there any issue with footage? Was there a problem with like a memory card or anything with the camera work or did, what, no, was everything never, captured? So, no. Everything was captured. Lucky. Yeah. In the editing suite, even though we use time sync, the audio and, and video isn't syncing. Yeah, that's the one problem. That's the, probably one uh -huh. thing. Can't sync up the audio. So we meant to highlight it all, just have it all sync, and we're having to go shot by shot to sync the yeah, audio. Yeah, uh, that's I mean, it's probably We had three different audio guys work on the mm -hmm. cinematographer, so maybe something yeah. happened there. I, I don't really know. We don't know what caused it, but it's like... There's over 1,500 shots in this film, and we're having yeah. to go through them one at a time to sync the audio, and it's it's a bit of oh shit, yeah, bit of a boy. That takes a while. I forgot yeah. the movie almost got shut down too because we had a COVID scare. Oh right. shit! Oh, that's yeah. right. One person got COVID. Yep. No one else. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. crazy it was lucky. Unfortunately, we for thought them. the film was over. Yeah, we yeah. thought yeah. If, like everything else that could have shut the movie down. That would have shut the movie down. Like mm -hmm. if everyone has COVID, or if half the cast has has COVID, we can't film. Yep. Very fortunate that only one person had COVID. He didn't really have any symptoms. He was fine, but he had to be isolated. But everyone got tested, and like we were so relieved after all the it tests came back negative it was insane. it was on the weekend i'd been doing runs to london i'd been dropping people off to and from london i think and then people were in london and as i got back sarah was kind of like this guy's got covid i've had to isolate him we have to test everybody and we were like if he's got it other people are gonna have it right if we Surely. have it the movie's yeah. over yeah, yeah it's like the film's over like we're gonna lose we're gonna lose like half our people we had the massive fight scene coming up on the monday which was the village like raid massacre thing um and it was like this film's over and sarah very kindly volunteered to test everybody isolated in this room confirmed we were clear and then we did everybody and then as people were coming back from london we were testing them and no one else had it yeah, and no. we still don't know how it's really possible we got lucky because everybody lucky. was living on top of each other yeah. but one guy got covid yep it's wild i mean that test could have been a, a false test too. no no, no test test I, so he yeah. sent me his test and then i tested him three more times three separate times uh -huh. and they um All positive. one came back negative two came back positive uh -huh. so 
Yeah, he had it. So I remember yeah. just being with James that day and being like, the film's done. There's no way if one of our lead actors has it or one of our like key crew members, that's it. And no one had it. It was insane. It was insanely, yeah. insanely lucky. Got very yeah. fortunate. Um, it's all the primes we've been drinking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Prime. I got them yeah. hooked on prime. Yeah. Oh my god, I have a problem now. Yeah, <laughs> me too, bro. Me too. I have I'm one like this morning. Dropping a hundred dollars on prime a month now. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had to stop. I've had to stop. It's, it's so goddamn good. But then so many little things like when we got to Liverpool, most of the crew had left and cast had left. It was just like the last week and a half, maybe like twelve of us staying in Liverpool yeah. at that house, and. Because things kept happening, one thing, it's one thing after another. another. <laughs> we get to the Airbnb, and the code wouldn't work to get in. It took us like 20 minutes, but we were just so like defeated. Like, great, another problem. Another fucking yeah. place. But then Sarah well, found another combination lockbox on like the they front were, gate. They were looking at the wrong box. But then listen, we went to the one at the door. There was like the door, and then just to the side was a lockbox where the keys are. Sure. And so we went there, and we're fucking around with that, and it wouldn't work. And then we were messaging support, and they were like, send us photos. I'm like, what do you want photos of? Like, the box not open? Like, <laughs> what, 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 like doesn't, so they weren't being helpful. And then Sarah investigated the garden, and then like hidden by behind the corner of the gate there was another box and it was in there no it wasn't it was just it was, right on the wall it was hidden it was, it, hidden. It was no, hidden it was not you had to move a giant stone there was a dragon <laughs> guarding there was, it. there was a warlock it was ridiculous you had to you had to solve a riddle from a sphinx <laughs> <laughs> like we could there was, it was not clear it was insane it was, it was not, not clear. clear it was wild like even with even if it was fairly clear the one on the door was so misleading yeah, it's like, yeah, so like yeah. here's the door, yeah, well, here's the lockbox, the combo's not you would working. Think like, uh -oh, why would you not you declare that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You have the listing, like, it's yeah. not that one, you know? Yeah. It, they should have specified, like, it's not the lockbox. And then we stayed right there, there for like a week, and on day two, one of the outlets blew up. Oh my gosh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. And then we had power no on fucking floor. power on the bottom or third floor, that meant no Wi Fi. Oh and so God. the repair guy came and then he came was like, I fixed it all but then didn't fix our fucking floor so we had no power for like the whole week there oh my god no well so like the whole fuse like the whole line in that fuse completely blew so also it, their wiring hadn't been inspected in like 10 years yeah. which was ridiculous that was hilarious but like the guys who came to fix it his solution was to just put a new outlet in and he thought that that would fix it but obviously it didn't because you need to replace the whole fuse line didn't fix but, it at all. Yeah, so we didn't have power upstairs. We didn't have Wi-Fi. I felt like he had no idea what he was doing when I was explaining. <laughs> I don't think problem. we did. He was either. just like wide-eyed, like wide-eyed, just like looking around, like so. There's no power anywhere. This fuse blew. He's like, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> this is first day of the job. Oh like, man, like the what did I walk into? <laughs> it looked like it was the first time he saw a house before. He's like, what is this place? <laughs> <laughs> this is not oh what I signed God. up for. And then he tried straight away because I met him at the door. It's like, oh hi. He's like, oh fellow Brit. Fair enough. And then he came in and it was all Americans. So he was very quick to just like cast the blame of like, um, I'm detecting an accent by any chance. Were you using like a converter plug or like whatever it was? <laughs> oh no, yeah. God. He asked, were you using an American plug in for like yeah. a straight an iron or yeah, a hot yeah. iron or something? So it was like, I no. detect an accent. And he was, like, yeah, <laughs> he was immediately trying to cast blame. Like, it's your fault. You did this. Goddamn yeah, Americans. 20 year old wiring. <laughs> Fucking yeah, Americans. It's our fault. It's our fault. <laughs> Sorry for making you do your fucking job. <laughs> then uh, I forgot that one of our actors. On the, like the last couple of days of filming, he got hit by a scooter. Yeah. Like the day before <laughs> the filming. Oh, yeah. oh the older yeah. gentleman, he's an older guy yeah. too. And he's yeah, like seventy four, he maybe scooter. seventy five. Yeah. So he's already getting on a bit, you know, and he's incredibly active and mobile for his age. Yeah, he does Muay Thai. So fucking yeah. sprightly, it's insane. Um, wearing suits of armor and shit, he was he was awesome, but. He showed up on like the last day of filming just in agony, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah he was limping. And, and yeah. he was like, yeah, I was hit by a fucking car or like a motorbike yesterday or some shit. One we of those like, bird scooters. Dude, are you yeah. okay? And he yeah. was like, yeah, let's just get the scenes and send me home. It's yep. wild. Damn. Again, one How thing you, after another. One thing after Something the, out of our control just went wrong. Not even involved with the shoot. Do you, want, do you want to talk about the parking lot? The parking lot? You know, with the van. What happened at the parking lot? The, Seriously? <laughs> What? Remember, I seriously don't remember. You remember right getting groceries? How you were driving a van. Remember in a getting groceries? Did, didn't? Wasn't there? A oh <laughs> man! Oh, I'd completely forgotten about that. Wow! Are you, are you, you had to bring that you, up. I'm just bringing up the list. Sarah there. hit a parked car. <laughs> <laughs> she hit a parked car. So it yeah. came out of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, we were parked in in the grocery lot because we were all going and getting groceries. Um, and I was driving a big a big minivan. Um, what do you call them? A minibuses. Van. A minivan. Yeah. Yeah. It's the the cargo vans. Yeah. The, the eight passenger van. It's a minivan. Okay, that is what you call it. 
Um, yeah, and I was just backing What's going up. On? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just asking what it was called in England. A van. A minivan, yeah. A van. Great. Okay. That, that was the or answer. Or a minibus? <laughs> that, oh, answer. you're after minibus. That's what you're after. Okay. Thank you. But that's not what you were driving. No. I was driving an eight passenger or the nine seater. That's not what I, I heard. You were on the smallest vehicle possible. <laughs> and you, you it was crashed all windows. Into... It was all windows. <laughs> it's a pretty empty parking lot. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I just I backed minivan. into a parked car. Yeah. The was... guy was super nice about it though. Like obviously I went out and I was started to leave him a note because he wasn't there, but then he walked out while I was writing the note. Um, James and was... did this. <laughs> 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 no, if he found if it was me, some guy like, oh, this, what did you do to my fucking car? I think that's why it was good for you to do it, even though you did hit the car. Yeah, maybe yeah. I don't know. But at that yeah, point, we were so nice. sleep deprived. I'm not surprised that. That was the only. I'm actually. That was the only thing that happened, which yeah. is pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. The the damage was minimal too. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't that bad. It was, it was okay. pretty funny. Yeah, got away with that. I think I'll never forget it. I I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> it was again. I got a phone call like I'm okay, but I I drove into a car and I was like, oh, not another fucking thing. No, you were asleep. I went no, and woke you up. Well, I went like, first. I, said, I thought it was a phone call. No, no, no. I, I went up there first. You were so sleep deprived. Yeah. You didn't even know what was going on. We, Where were we, we actually, when this happened? We, we had this conversation twice because I went the first up. Time I went up. Yeah, it. I went up there and I'm like, hey, oh, got some groceries. Also. Sarah has a funny story for you. Are you being serious? Yeah, yeah. and then I have no recollection. And then you're yeah. like, "Well, what'd she do?" I'm like, I'm like she, "You're like, is anyone hurt?" I'm like, "No, everyone's fine, but it's just a funny story. I'll wait for her to tell you." We had this conversation. I don't remember. So this. When, when Nathan's very sleepy, he like blackouts. He like sleep talks and sleep walks. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do, do that, it's like yeah. a, it's like a a version of him. It's like a, a like a zombie <laughs> that you can talk to. You can tell him like the passcode to a, a safe full of a billion dollars, and he'll forget it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like in that moment he's fully. Responsive. I'm awake. Yeah, he like, seems real. My yeah. eyes, my <laughs> eyes open. Real. I'll talk to people, but I'm asleep. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's amazing. People never believe it until they see it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could be asleep right now. You guys don't know. I could, I could be asleep. <laughs> Oh man, but I mean that's all I can think of crazy stuff. But it always just pops into my head this thing there, this thing here. Yeah, so it's insane the amount of things that happen. It's making us forget, and yeah. then yeah. we'll be talking about like the amount of things you brought up today, and I'm like, oh shit, that did happen. Yeah, yeah. like that's insane. Yeah, we we just had so many. I made a list last night. I just went through everything. I wish I had. A, I wish I, wish I was making order. a list of I'm a gonna diary. frame it yeah. of like things we ever overcame, like pride. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we went through so much that we can do anything, I think. It was, At this it was point, an yeah. intense shoot. It I don't think so a shoot fun. will ever be harder than that. I don't think so either. It was grueling, that's... it was tough, and it was ambitious, and it was, a, it was a long long days and long hours, but it was the best time ever, though. It was, it was so awesome. fun. Yeah. It was epic. It was a great time. For sure. It was absolutely epic. I'd do it all it. again. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, yep. it was great. Yeah, it, it was so much fun. God yeah. damn. Lovely. Yeah, man. We made As a film, great. like, yeah, it's in the edit now, and... Um, so, like some of the scenes are rushed right because we ran out of time and stuff like that so yeah. looking some of the scenes it's like looking back frustrated there's some scenes that aren't filmed the way i envisioned it like as the director um but that's to be expected because i was like in front of the lens and sleep deprived and all this stuff and then james was stepping up and helping me and there's a bunch of stuff that wasn't shot the way i envisioned it but it's better um because james had great ideas and i tried to be as collaborative as i i could with james like you did a bunch of directing on on the shoot uh which was amazing so we've got this really cool collection of footage now so we're going to go into the suite and see what we can do with it and yeah it should be out like i don't know late this year maybe early next year hell yeah uh, we might do a festival run we may release it we may just do private screenings we don't know yet that's the thing like there's no pressure because no big company backed this or anything there was no pressure on like rules we had to follow like things we had to do or mm -hmm. meet or anything like that so we could technically just bury it now if we wanted to or we could just release it on youtube like this there's like the world's kind of our oyster in that sense which is really exciting um but it's also led to us now talking about other projects so we've got a secret mm -hmm. project coming up soon where we're going to be setting loads of fucking people on fire <laughs> so fuck many yeah. people on fire fuck yeah crossing my fingers we do that yeah it'll be a blast but yeah i, I can't so wait to see fun. a cut of this yeah yeah, yeah. We're, we're gonna do we're some, some trailers today. at the yeah. moment yeah. Uh -huh. that's like the next thing some some trailers yeah. and then um is someone working on the assembly uh, soon yeah, yeah so yeah. We've, we've got an editor on board but they can't start for another little while which is cool because that gives me enough time to go through and sync all the audio which is mm -hmm. taking fucking yeah years. And label it all and we've been yeah. just kind of yeah. going through all the footage and putting some teasers together for ah. right now because nice. uh yeah because we're, we're um we're doing another feature film at the end of this year um if timing works out right and then maybe another one next year so we're kind of gearing up for that so what we need right now to help strengthen it that is 
trailers and this is what we shot last time and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we have that time now because the editor doesn't start actually editing and piecing the film together and trying to get that picture cut done for another month or two. So um, we got nothing but time. So it's all good. It's all good. I can't wait for people to see it. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I'm excited. Super excited. It's been a great I, I a love great it because there's yeah. going to be scenes where people watch it and it's kind of like, I can't believe this was micro budget and yeah. they pulled this shit off. Yeah. And then there are going to be scenes where it's like, this is one of the scenes where they ran out of time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can, I can, like, the quality is probably going to be affected in certain areas of the film. But I think given the amount of shit we overcame, it's, it's actually. I can't wait to see that merchant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to either. <laughs> uh, I'd rather watch that than the other acting I did. Not the stunt? I, I, when I saw that when we were going through the footage the other day, I'm like, I don't want to look at that. I don't wanna, oh, the merchant, sure, I'll watch it. I don't want to <laughs> look at that. Because I'm just so self-conscious about that scene. Yeah. Because I, I feel like I ruined it. You're worried when we were shooting it because it was a big fight scene. And also, you were fighting with, like, it, it wasn't we just had the regular stunt performers in that scene. I, I was in that scene. Sarah was in that scene. The stunt coordinator himself was in that scene. Our, our key, key rigger. Our key yeah. rigger, who's also a stunt coordinator, was in that scene. And then one stunt guy. Uh, so it was kind of like you were you were playing with the big boys. Yeah, know? and yeah. it was crazy because we were just directing a scene. We were just making a, a scene like right before. And then I thought I was just going to come on set and get stabbed and die. They're like, all right. They showed me all my steps. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a three-minute scene with all this movement. I'm like, I got a million things on my mind right now. Holy fuck. And we had what was wild for that is we had no fucking director because Sarah and I were both in that scene. Yeah. <laughs> and then James was in that scene. So the three of us were having to rotate like mm. who was behind the lens. <laughs> Looking at and monitor, setting the yeah. shot. And doing the mo yeah and all that stuff uh while the others were in it so we we're having to just rotate and figure that out um and some of it we were just leaving to the dp it was super fun out. i was just i was just worried i was ruining it i'm sure you did great. that was Cause... one of my favorite fights Why, for sure you got to beat me up well yeah because i got to kill you but then also nathan and i did this sick ass um yeah but i think i ruined the like... shot but yeah yeah it was cool bit of courier it though. was still sick yeah, it, it was, was so cool it was tasty i can't yeah. wait to see it it was a, a little hat tip to First Night, which is one of my favorite films ever. Uh, First Night, Richard nice. Richard Gere, yeah, Sean Connery. It's got what got me into kind of sword fighting and uh -huh. kind of interested in stunts when I was very, very young. It was that one like 1997 or some shit, I don't mm. know. Um, and I love that film. And there's a really beautiful moment where someone like is fighting and the sword drops onto the floor and then someone else needs the sword. So in this big carnage, they kick the sword through the battle and the other person catches it on their mm -hmm. team. And, and so we put this moment in as a little hat tip. So yep. there's a bit where I have a sword on my foot and I'm fighting James. I and dropped it on your foot. Sarah's yeah, yeah. being yeah. like strangled against a tree and then <laughs> yeah. I, I kick the sword across and she catches it. And we did it on the first take. And we got it on a take. We did it on the first take. take. Yeah, so it was, it was so really good. cool. That was awesome. It was sick. Yeah, it was a really nice moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should talk about the good things on the <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> on There's the so much I've got about it that was good. I mean, the locations were excellent. The the cast, everyone was good. The stunties were terrific to work with. And yeah. there was so much fun. I just had the time of my life. Man. And we had some great actors. Hunter was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, true professional. He's still in drama school. I is it university here? Would you mm -hmm. college? You yeah. guys say yeah, college. Yeah, it's he both. played the villain. Yeah, yeah, he played the antagonist. He was excellent, and he, he was so yeah. good. So you know, good. I think this is his first so feature, good. and he's just a wonderful human being, super talented. Did a bunch of fight scenes. There were there were a few fight scenes he did where he'd be fighting, you know, twenty stunt guys, and there was no choreography per se because the type of shot we were trying to get, and they were running in, and he was having to improvise, like destroying them with like magic. Let's say he plays a god. And he was so good at helping the stunt performers out when they like fucked up or like missed a cue or slipped or didn't sell a, a stunt very well, uh, which happens. He was so good at using his body to kind of cover that and help cheat that. And so he was just a really natural, like moves really well, acts really well, took direction really well. Yeah. Um, that was an issue we have with some of the actors. They mm -hmm. just don't fucking listen to direction. I never thought that was going to be a problem. I don't know if, if you thought. No, I agree. He brought this really cool like anime quality to his character too, yeah. which I really love. Like this anime villain yeah. and style, which was epic. Mm. And he was a professional, you know. He had yeah. his bust, his lip bust open, and he just it didn't get him down. He kept doing his thing. Um, he he wanted to be topless for one of the scenes. He thought it was relevant for one of his characters, so it was like fucking like minus one or something, and he's out just bare chested and out doing what was yeah. needed to be done for the yeah. film. Didn't complain. Didn't moan. Just, just you know, shit hot on it. It was a, yeah. just absolute pleasure to work with him. Yeah, the stunties were incredible. The whole team, everyone was awesome. I had a great time. Everyone was super professional. Worked their asses off. Yeah. Everyone was helping with grafting, with loading, unloading. That's the thing. Like, we had yeah. a bunch of people just helping yeah. out with hands. Yeah. And a lot of people were eager to learn stuff. Like, there were some stunt people. Yeah, keen, yeah. Yeah, that were, like, really excited to do little things like helping with lighting. They just wanted to learn and have opportunities to do something new, which is cool. I like that a lot. 
I don't know. It was a really interesting experience working with actors. Um, Everyone's different. Like yeah. I said, you have to manage so many personalities on set, and it's tough, you know, guiding through all that. But you mm. kind of have to learn how to deal with it. But again, there's a hierarchy on a set that people have to stay in their lane. If you want the movie to succeed, you have to stay in your fucking lane. At the end of the day. Yep. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah, I, I agree. There are people who are in charge. Just because you want to do it differently, if they're open to collaboration, like yeah, for sure. But not always. Not always. Not always. Yeah. We gotta. We gotta fucking go. We gotta laser focus, everybody. <laughs> laser <laughs> focus. Laser <laughs> focus. <laughs> <So> lasers. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I had such a great time. Friends for life because of it, and you know, I can't wait to do the next one. Yeah, like there were people yeah. on that set, which is like next time we do a film, they're getting a phone call straight away, 100%, right? It's yeah. kind of like, yep, hundred percent. We want. We want you back. You were great. You're professional. Easy to work with. Good for morale. It's insane how much how much you want to pick up the phone to get someone working on your set. Like if say we, the next film, if we come into this with the same kind of setup and our roles and crew and everything, it's insane how much weight the not being on camera stuff carries. Yeah. Like, you know, keeping morale up behind scenes, going above and beyond, you know, checking in, being just a good team player. Um, the amount of weight that carries is insane. Obviously I know this in stunts because sometimes in stunts, putting your life in someone else's hands you know when you're on fire you yeah. can't put yourself out that's someone else's job you know yep so it's like you're literally putting your life it's clear you need to be a team player to get the job and to keep each other safe but just being just you know pivotal crew roles i, I didn't realize it would apply to that you know it's interesting man it was a good time good yeah. time fun stories time. you guys want to talk about anything else from Norse game rage rage, rage. <laughs> no rage. i can't wait for people to see it and we're in the edit suite now we'll start putting some trailers together soon hopefully you can see some bits and pieces yep and we can't wait for people to check it out fuck yeah man hell yeah Very exciting hell yeah well thanks for coming on the show guys of course Nathan yeah. and, and congrats on finishing the feature well it's finished filming yeah we gotta yeah. edit it now getting there uh, we, we, you, you just said it we so know that we've, we've so gone through half, half the battle after you <laughs> film a movie Anthony, <laughs> we know that so you take it <laughs> and you so editing have you heard of it <laughs> what is this <laughs> what, what is oh this God. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All right, take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. This episode was executive produced by our chosen one patrons, Cody Moen, Andrew Hagen, Benjamin Cook, Calvin Murphy Griggs, Darian, Tyler McFly, Mark Nikaj. Our chosen one patrons are our biggest supporters. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well, notifications for sure. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you can listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out this other content we have on our YouTube channel.